Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hey, what's going on everybody? You got Tommy and Randy here. Today we're going to be going over a book called The Adventist Timeline. And this goes over the history of the uh, Adventist organization. And I'll put a PDF of this in the description below. But also, we're going to go through a new way of, of doing our videos. We're actually going to have a narrator read the book for us. And then we're just going to introduce it and maybe talk about it a little bit at the end. Or just maybe just leave it as it is. But also, if you want to get a copy of this book, you can go to presenttruth.info or truthseeker.church and just send send them brothers and sisters an email and uh, tell them you want one of these books and I, they're not very much I mean it, they don't even charge they actually just ask for a donation I, I know I get them in bulk and I hand them out for free so but I'm here with Randy and he's a former Adventist in the organization and Randy what can you tell us about the Adventist organization yeah uh, Tommy good to be here good to be with you, everyone today I hope the Lord is blessing you uh, the reason why me and Tommy are bringing up this subject is that I've ran into a lot of Adventists, Tommy, that don't know the history or the beginning of their denomination. Uh, and there's some very serious problems here of straying away from the Bible, Tommy. So the book that, that we're uh, promoting today uh, gives a step-by-step -step timeline of what has happened over time within the Seventh-day Adventist organization. I don't want to call it a church because, uh, well, it is a church, but can I, I can't because church means called out once from Babylon. And what I mean by that is, is that uh, the Seventh-day Adventist church or called out ones have changed. Their belief system, not from the Bible, and the Bible alone as a rule of faith. And of course, we know, me and you've discussed that, Tommy, the topic is on the Trinity. Yes. Our fraud head, our twittity, as some would say, uh, some would say is that we have a serious problem here, Tommy. And I know me and you, and I, I know if you don't know your history, what are you do to repeat, Tommy? You're, yeah, you're due to repeat Peter, your history. Yeah. So this book will give you a short synopsis I say short of the history of the Seventh Day Adventist. And I know that Tommy probably agrees with that. That me and you want, or me and Tommy and the Lord would like to get this book into every Adventist hands, that including the pastors, the theologians at Andrews University, uh, California, Doug Batchelor, Walter Veith. And let's start studying this together and see what changes were made and the dates that, that they were made on that promoted this pagan doctrine of the Trinity. Yes. So our objective is download this and send this out to as many Adventists as you possibly can. So you know your history. Yes. The beginning, the humble beginnings that you began from, and how a lot of things were changed, and they were even uh, prophesied, Tommy, to change. And we are seeing that happening, and it's becoming more and more and more, Tommy. And one thing that I've noticed about after I went through this book, if if the Adventist people knew the history of the church, it would expose so much of what's going on right now. Uh, and, and this kind of reminds me of what the papacy did back during the Dark Ages. They did not allow people to know what the Bible said. They didn't even want their people to be able to read and write. And they actually told the people what the Bible said because they were able to keep things um, out of the, the knowledge of the people because it exposed them as being the beast power. And I've noticed that the Seventh-day Adventist organization is doing the exact same thing today. No different, Tommy. No. And we believe that you should have all the truth and nothing but the truth. Yep. And it's for you to make the decision with your Bible, not me and Tommy. It's between you, the, the, the Son of God, and the Father. It's not between us. But uh, a large majority of people are being lied to, and I, I'm going to say this, uh, by the Seventh-day Adventist hierarchy, Tommy. Yep. So you'll see the changes that came in. I'm going to leave it right here. Of where the doctrine of the Trinity came in, the pioneers, including Miss White and all the pioneers, 
did not believe in the doctrine of the Trinity and did not teach it. By the way, it's not a biblical doctrine, period. Whether they did it or not, neither did the apostles, neither did anybody in the Old Testament, neither did God and Jesus, Tommy. Yeah, and it wasn't there wasn't new light after after uh, Ellen White passed away. So, and if if she didn't have the truth about who God was and who Jesus was, then how could she be a true prophet? Couldn't she go against the Bible and the Bible alone is your rule of faith? And that's where we should stick at today is the Bible and the Bible alone. So this handy little book will help you to understand the history of the Seventh-day Adventist and uh, to give you a more uh, uh, intellectual of where your humble beginnings came and where the changes took place and exactly who made the changes, Tom. So I'm going to leave it at that, Tommy. Well, Randy, before we go, I do want to say one more thing. Uh, you were telling me uh, earlier about when you're baptized and, and to, into the organization, um, they don't even let you read the church manual, right, before you get baptized? Mm. How does that work exactly? Okay, I'll, I'll fill some people in here. When you're baptized, you're baptized into a private organization called the Seventh-day Adventist uh, uh, Church, which is uh, copyright with the name. So they don't tell you that you're under the church manual, which the original pioneers never wanted, Tommy. They even had a controversy about that in the early 1800s as they began. And anyway, the church manual puts you under the dictation of the general conference. You know, they say they have Bible scripture in there. But if you're baptized, you should know that you're underneath the church manual. It should be handed to you, and it should be read to you before you're baptized. Another thing that I want you to be fully aware of when you're in a new organization or a private organization is that you they have complete control over you within that organization. It's like a private club, Tommy. So they can bring up any amount of charges, whether you like them or not, and they will try to say that it's from the Bible. And you can be brought before a, uh, uh, a board or uh, what you would call a, a disciplinary board and you can be uh, kicked out of that movement with no recourse, Tommy. You know, I might not like the way you look, or you might have wore the wrong shoes that day, Tommy, for a couple of Sabbaths. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, you could, you know, there's a problem there. So you cannot sue, you know. Of course, we try to keep away from that. We try to settle it with a brother before then, biblically. But you cannot sue for any wrongdoing. You're in a private organization. The Bible never taught that. That's kind of church and state combination there, Tommy. Yes. You know what I mean? Also, they never should have been a 501c3. Yeah, and you, you can't be represented by a lawyer. No, you can't bring a lawyer into any of the meetings. And all the meetings, if you ever want to know information about that, you can contact me or you can contact Tommy about how the process is because I can tell you the process and, and they pretty well stick beside that. Uh, first, they accuse you, the accusations, uh, and so forth, and then they spread it to the whole church. They most won't come up to you and talk to you privately, you know. And especially on this doctrine of the Trinity, Tommy, uh, if you want to see how loving somebody is and how kind uh, they are, uh, study the the doctrine of the Trinity from the Bible and see what happens, how that love changes, you know, when we should be led to Christ and the Father through their spirit, not another spirit, right? Yes. And see how their uh, uh, demeanor changes. But I'm going to leave uh, that off if you want to have more information of that. Uh, and by the way, they won't let you tape. We have a tape of uh, individuals being kicked out of a, an organization just because they were standing up for the Bible the Bible alone on this pagan doctrine of the Trinity. Yeah, they simply ask questions. I mean, we even have the letter, the, the uh, disfellowship letter yeah. and everything. We'll probably do a video on that after a while, maybe even do a little bit of an interview. Another, another thing, if you have a pastor or other church members coming up to you ever saying, you know, if you ever need help with anything, if you're ever struggling in any, any of these areas, just come to me and I'll help you. Uh, don't fall for that because the, the pastors and the members, they are basically the priests in the confessional booth without there being a confessional booth. And all they're going to do is use your problems against you and hold them over, over your head as blackmail. And you need to take your problems to Jesus and Je Jesus only. Amen. And they become they can become a, a, an accuser of the brethren. Now, if you're giving a lot of money, you won't have that problem. <laughs> yeah. You won't have that problem if you're giving a lot of tithe money 
Uh, but if you're not, and it's amazing how if you're giving a lot of time and influence, how many sins can go undiscovered, but that they know about. Yes. You know, all there. But if you're a poor brother that doesn't have anything to offer, uh, they might, you know, not like something, bring it back. Now, that's not all. But you have to be very careful because we don't need a confessional. The only person we need to go through is through Jesus to the Father, not your priest or your pastor uh, or your elder. Now, you can confide in a brother to help you to lead you to the Lord, but just watch out who you're confiding in because that could become an accuser very quickly, Tommy. I yes. don't want to know your personal business. I'll help you through different... Do you want to know people's personal business, No, no. I can help you to lead you to Christ just like you can help me, but I don't need to hear... That because I can't save you. Can you save anybody, Tom? No. No. And, you know, we'll leave it at that. Yep. All right. Thank you. And please check out this book, share it with others, uh, order copies, pass them out, spread them like leaves of autumn. So uh, please like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Thank you. Take care and God bless. Vintage Timeline. By said timeline of what has happened over time within the Seventh day Adventist Church. Vintage Timeline is a creation and published work of True Seeker Ministries, New York, USA. All rights reserved. To order print copies of this booklet, email order desk at True Seeker store. In this booklet, you will notice some names of people that are highlighted in bold text, and in particular, their deaths. Most of these folks were the first-generation pioneers that were involved in being a part of this denomination. Many of them were the core that set the foundation of our faith through Jesus Christ. A few to note were sons or daughters of the first-generation pioneers, and as you will see, they have died along the way and that brings some significance to the history of this denomination. As you get closer to 1900, you have new names coming in which allowed for the slow transformation of change. As our pioneers, or old-timers, were dying off, those Sunday-keeping converts that had come in became the majority over time. And as they came in, they brought in their beliefs and concepts, and a different ideology about who God is. Our church would eventually be taken over and ruled by educated scholars from the Jesuit system of academia. They chose a career path of theology rather than a true calling from God. Our early people were led by the Spirit of God, and as prophesied by Ellen White in 1903, a new organization would be set up and our religion would be changed that was completely fulfilled in 1980. But first to start this off, we will look at a movement nicknamed the Millerite Movement, which would soon become the Edmund Movement. 1831 first Sunday in August, William Miller preached his first sermon, The Coming of Christ. 1832 William Miller began a series of articles on the Second Advent in the Vermont Telegraph of Brandon, B.T., 1833 March, Miller's first pamphlet published. September 14, he was granted a license to preach by the Baptist Church. 1836 Miller's course of 16 lectures published in pamphlet form at Troy, N.Y. 1838, about the 1st of March, Josiah Litcher, Methodist minister of Lowell Mass, embraced Miller's views and began to proclaim them by voice and pen. His 48-page pamphlet, The One, Midnight Cry, and his book of 204 pages entitled the probability of the second coming of Christ about A.D. 1843 came out this year. 1839 early in December, Joshua B. Himes of Boston, Mass. Joined William Miller and Josiah Litch in the proclamation of the Advent message. 1840 March 20, Joshua B. Himes began, in Boston, Mass, the publication of the Signs of the Times. The paper thus started was published for two years as a semi-monthly and then as a weekly. March, William Miller gave his first course of lectures in Portland, Maine. They were attended by Ellen G. Armin later, Mrs. E. C. White. First General Conference of Second Advent Believers convened in the Chardon Street Chapel in Boston, Mass., October 15, and continued two days. 1841 Second General Conference of Advent Believers held in Lowell, Mass., June 1517. Third General Conference of Christians expecting the advent of the Lord in Portland, Maine. October 12, 1841. Between the date and February 8, 1842, seven similar conferences were held in the New England states. 1842 The Signs of the Times has not less than 50,000 readers. More than 60,000 copies of various books and tracts have been issued from our establishment and spread through the world in the four quarters of the globe and the islands of the sea. 
From three to four hundred ministers of the gospel are now engaged in giving the midnight cry. Signs of the Times, March 15. In the latter part of November, Joshua V. Himes began the publication, in New York City, of a daily paper entitled, The Midnight Cry, principally under the editorial supervision of Ben Southford. Numbers were published, and ten thousand copies of each number circulated. During the summer, tent and camp meetings, with large attendance held in eastern Canada, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, New York, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. James White attended the camp meeting at Exeter, Maine, in October, and shortly thereafter went out to give the message. December, Josiah Litch and Apollos Hale began public services in Philadelphia. 1,843 different ministers conducted meetings in the South and West going as far as Richmond, Va, Washington, D.C., Pittsburgh, Pa, and Cincinnati, Ohio. Papers devoted to the Advent cause were published in Cincinnati, Philadelphia, and Washington, also in eastern Canada. James White ordained to the ministry by the Christian Church. The Methodists, at an annual meeting held at Bath, Maine passed resolutions condemning the Advent teaching. Opposition on the part of the churches was becoming general. 1844 a second Advent camp meeting was held in the late summer at Exeter, in H, following which the belief became general among the followers of William Miller that Christ would come October 22, 1844. Abbott first brought to the attention of the Adventist people at Washington, N. H., by Mrs. Rachel Oakes Preston, a Seventh-day Baptist from the state of New York. From this place, several Adventist ministers received the Sabbath truth during 1844. One person of interest, Thomas M. Preble, put his convictions in writing. 1845 Preble's article on the Sabbath, dated February 13, 1845, was written at Eastware N. H., and was printed in the Hope of Israel, Portland, Maine, February 28, 1845. It was rewritten by Elder Preble in March, 1845, and published in tract form. It was referred to by Joseph H. Wagoner, and briefly quoted by him in the Review and Herald of December 21, 1869. August 23, 1870, Preble's article, as it appeared in the Hope of Israel, was printed in full in the Review. Ellen G. Harmon given her first vision on the travels of the then people to the Holy City. Joseph Bates began keeping the Sabbath as a result of reading the article of T.M. Preble in the Hope of Israel. 1846 James White married Ellen Good Harmon, August 30, co-founders along with Joseph Bates of what would become the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Two-page leaflet by Mrs. E.G. White entitled, To the Remnant Scattered Abroad Published. 1848 First General Meeting of Sabbath Keepers held at Rocky Hill Khan, April 20, 21. Mrs. E. G. White had vision concerning the beginning of the publishing walk. 1849 First Four Numbers of Present Truth printed at Middletown Khan, No. 1 dated July, Nos. 5 and 6 printed in Oswego, N.Y. by James White. John Evans Andrews publicly took his stand for the truth in a meeting in Paris, Maine, September 14. First number of the Second Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, printed in Paris, Maine in November. Death of William Miller, December 20. Born February 5, 1782. First testimony for the Church, addressed to those who are receiving the seal of the living God. Signed E.G. White. First hymn book used by the denomination published by James White. It contained 53 hymns without tunes, 1,850 nos. 7 to 10 of present truth printed in Oswego, N.Y. No. 11 printed in Paris, Maine, in November. 1851 first number of second volume Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, dated August 5, printed at Saratoga Springs, New York. Annie R. Smith took a stand for the truth and entered the employ of the review office at Saratoga Springs. 1852 first number of the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald published, Rochester, N.Y. Or date of May 6. James White equipped the first printing office with money received in donations. Donations amounted to $655.84. The cost of equipment was $652.95. The first press bought was a Washington hand press. First number of the youth instructor appeared in August. John Norton Loughborough kept his first Sabbath, October 2. 
Mariah Smith observed his first Sabbath in December. Joseph Harvey Wagner accepted the message and was ordained to the gospel ministry. 1,853 Uriah Smith connected with the Review and Herald May 3. First subscription price put on publications was $1 for 26 numbers of the Review. First regular Sabbath schools organized in Rochester and Bucksbridge, N.Y. Martha Byington, daughter of future General Conference President John Byington, opens the first known church, School for Sabbatarian Adventists in Bucksbridge, New York, USA. 1,854 first tent meeting conducted by J. N. Loughborough and M. E. Cornell at Battle Creek, Midge, June 10 12. First sale of denominational publications at a tent meeting in Rochester, Mitch. A parcel containing one copy each of all tracts and pamphlets published, sold for 35 cents, price being fixed by J. N. Loughborough. 1855 NAR. Smith died July 26. Review office moved to Battle Creek, Mitch, first number of. Review printed their board date of December 4. 1856 The name of Stephen N. Haskell first appeared in the Review January 31. 1858 Bible class, conducted by J. N. Andrews held in Battle Creek, Mitch, in April. Its object was to learn what the scriptures teach concerning the support of the ministry. This effort resulted in the adoption of the plan known as Systematic Benevolence, or the Tithing Principle. 1860 The Remnant adopted the name Seventh-day Adventist for the denomination October 1. On the same day a temporary organization, known as the Advent Review Publishing Association, was formed in Battle Creek, Mitch. 1860 One Seventh-day Adventist Publishing Association, now Review and Herald Publishing Association, Incorporated May 1. Churches first formally organized. Michigan organized as the first state conference, October 5. 1,862 other conferences organized, Southern Iowa, March 16, Northern Iowa, May 10, Vermont, June 15, Illinois and Wisconsin, September 28, Minnesota, October 4, New York, October 25. 1,863 General Conference, organized at a meeting held in Battle Creek, Mitch, May 2023. Meeting was called by James White, J.N. Uffborough, and John Byington. There were 20 duly elected delegates, representing the work in six states. John Byington elected first president of the General Conference, May 21. 1,864 August 29, Elder J.N. Andrews left Battle Creek for Washington, D.C., where he was successful in securing for Seventh-day Adventists in the Army recognition as being conscientiously opposed to taking human life even in war, and their assignment to non-combatant service in hospitals, etc. 1,065 First Health Publication, How to Live Published, written and compiled by Mrs. E. G. White. James White elected President of the General Conference, May 17, 1,866 First Denominational Health Journal Published, bearing the name Health Reformer, August 1. Health Reform Institute Battle Creek Sabbatarium opened for patients, September 5. 1867 J.N. Andrews elected President of the General Conference, May 14. The Health Reform Institute Incorporated, April 9. 1868 First California State Gathering of Seventh-day Adventists held near Santa Rosa, April 10-11. James White again became president of the General Conference, May 12. First general camp meeting held at Wright, Michigan, September 1-7. A local tract and missionary society organized in South Lancaster, Mass, known as the Vigilant Missionary Society. 1871st Conference Tract and Missionary Society organized, November 6, called Missionary and Tract Society of the New England Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. 1871 10th Annual Session of the General Conference convened in Battle Creek, Mitch, December 29, with 14 delegates present, representing 12 conferences and one mission. George I. Butler succeeded James White as president. 1872 in Battle Creek, Michigan, United States, Goodloe Harper Bell opens the first school sponsored by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. 1872 The Declaration of fundamental principles taught and practiced by the Seventh-day Adventist is published at Battle Creek, My. Primarily written by James White, these fundamentals serve as a synopsis of faith published in a pamphlet. This lays down a clear non-Trinitarian foundation and was not replaced or changed in any way until 1931. 
These propositions are based on 1 Corinthians 8, 6, and do not contain the term cardhead or trinity. Death of Elder Joseph Bates in Battle Creek, Mitch, March 19, at the age of 80. He was buried in Monterey, Michigan, in Battle Creek, Michigan, United States. Goodo Harper Bell opens the first school sponsored by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Ellen G. White writes her seminal essay, Proper Education, which appears in installment form in The Health Reformer and later in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3. First denominational school opened, June 3, in Battle Creek, Mitch, G.H., Bell in Charge. 1873 11th session of the General Conference, Battle Creek, Mitch, March 11. There were 18 delegates representing 13 conferences and one mission. Total number of ministers 51 licentiates, 83 churches, 239, membership 5,875. Systematic Benevolence Fund pledged to state conferences $26,246. 69. Review and Herald, March 18. 1,873. 1,874 Battle Creek College, the first Adventist college, opens with Sidney Brownsbridge as president. It enrolls both male and female students. The General Conference organizes the Educational Society in Michigan so that it can provide oversight for its new program of education. 1,874 The Fundamental Principles of 1,872 are published again by James White in the very first issue of The Signs of the Times, June 4, 1874, issued from Oakland, California, and by Uriah Smith in the Review and Herald, November 24, 1874. In his introductory remarks to the fundamental principles in The Signs, James White states, in presenting to the public this synopsis of our faith, we wish to have it distinctly understood that we have no articles of faith, creed, or discipline aside from the Bible. We do not put forth this as having authority with our people, nor is designed to secure uniformity among them as a system of faith, but as a brief statement of what is and has been, with great unanimity held by them. James White again elected President of General Conference, August 10. J. N. Andrews, our first foreign missionary, sailed from Boston, September 15. General Conference Tract and Missionary Society Organized. 1875 Main Building of Battle Creek College, dedicated January 4. Adventist Publishing Association, now Pacific Press Publishing Association, Incorporated, at Oakland Caliph, April 1. Missouri Conference organized June 2. Kansas Conference organized September 10. 1877 North Pacific Conference organized October 25. It embraced much of the territory now included in the North Pacific Union. A state Sabbath school association organized in California. John G. Matteson sailed for Denmark, beginning his labors at Vedram, Jutland. The Biblical Institute, where Uriah Smith and James White outlined the principal doctrines of Seventh-day Adventists, was held in Oakland, California, covering everything from the sanctuary to prophecy, the nature of sin to the nature of Christ. This institute confirmed and strengthened the teachings of Adventism, as outlined in the Fundamentals of 1872. 1878 General Conference, Sabbath School Association organized, and the first Sabbath School contributions given. Battle Creek Tabernacle built. St. Helena Sanitarium established. 1879 First Local Young People Society organized at Hazelton, Michigan. June 7 J. G. Matteson organized Church of 38 Members in Christiania, Norway. A printing house was established in Christiania about the same time and Tiden's Ten Signs of the Times began to be issued. Mrs. E. G. White wrote her first message regarding house-to-house -house work with our publications. Tabernacle in Battle Creek, Michigan is dedicated. 1881st Baptism of Believers in England at Southampton, February 8. George I. Butler again is President of the General Conference, October 6. 1881 Death of Elder James White at Battle Creek, Midge, August 6. Born August 4, 1821. The first Adventist textbook, A Natural Method in English, is produced by Goodo Harper Bell. 1882 The church opens its second college program, Healdsburg College, in Northern California. 1883 Death of Elder J. B. Fisby. Death of Elder John Nevins Andrews at Basel, Switzerland, 
October 21, born 1829, at the General Conference Session, November 8, 20, 1883, decided against publishing a church manual, as it was deemed undesirable to take any steps towards a discipline, creed, or form of formalism. It is the unanimous opinion of the committee appointed to consider the matter of the church manual that it would not be advisable to have a church manual. We consider it unnecessary because we have already surmounted the greatest difficulties connected with church organization without one, and perfect harmony exists among us on this subject. It would seem to many like a step toward the formation of a creed or a discipline other than the Bible, something we have always been opposed to as a denomination. If we had one, we fear many, especially those commencing to preach, would study it to obtain guidance in religious matters, rather than to seek for it in the Bible, and from the leading of the Spirit of God, which would tend to their hindrance in genuine religious experience and in knowledge of the mind of the Spirit. It was in taking similar steps that other bodies of Christians first began to lose their simplicity and become formal and spiritually lifeless. Why should we imitate them? The committee feels, in short, that our tendency should be in the direction of the policy and close conformity of the Bible, other than to elaborately defining every point in church management and church ordinances, and motioned this report with reference to church manual was accepted. It was then also voted that the President of the General Conference be requested to write an article for the review explaining the action of the conference on the subject of the manual. Review and Herald, November 20, 1883, Yearbook, 1884, pp. 3336. So decided at the General Conference session, a committee would be formed of five men, set up to change the testimonies for the Church, condensing them from thirty-one parts to a four-part volume set. Future releases of the testimonies expanded this to a nine-volume set ending in 1909. 1880. Three, the church's first school of nursing opens at Battle Creek Sanitarium, operated by doctors. Kate Lindsay and Anne Stewart under the auspices of Dr. John Harvey Keller. 1884, the first Seventh-day Adventist yearbook is published. It includes all the statistics of the denomination. This will begin an annual practice. Total number of ministers, 165, licentiates, 135 churches, 680 membership, 17,436 tithes raised during the year $96,418.62. From 1,884 year book P73, first denominational training school for nurses opened at the Battle Creek Sanitarium. The present truth issued in England, Milton C. Wilcox, editor. 1,885 first party of workers for Australia, including S. N. Husco, J. O. Corliss, and others sailed from San Francisco. R. F. Andrews began labor in Ireland. Mrs. E. G. White and Willie C. White visited the believers in Europe, arriving at Basel, Switzerland, in September. 1886 L. R. Conradi sent to Europe in January. L. R. Conradi made his first visit to Russia. First Seventh-day Adventist church organized in the Crimea. Conradi came into the church in 1870. First number of the Australian Bible Echo and Signs of the Times issued in January. Church organized in Melbourne, April 10. 1887 First European Camp Meeting held at Moss, Norway in June. Arthur G. Daniels opened the first SDA church in New Zealand. The General Conference creates the Office of Secretary of Education, appointing W. W. Prescott to the position in addition to his responsibilities as President of Battle Creek College. First Missionaries DA. Robinson C. L. Boyd, and others sent to South Africa, reaching there in July. Establishment of local or church schools recommended by the Educational Society. A. Aru went as a self-supporting missionary to China, a British publishing house established in London, England. 1888 H. P. Hulser sent to Europe. Death of B. L. Whitney, April 9, 1888. Born December. In 1845, O. A. Olson elected president of the General Conference, October 17, the 27th General Conference session in 1888 is held at Minneapolis, Minnesota, with 91 delegates and a prox. 
475 attendees. God brings the truth of justification by faith to his people through Elders Wagner and Jones. Built on a powerful biblical foundation, this message of the love of God marked the beginning of the loud cry. But sadly, the message is resisted by a large majority of the church leadership. Len White writes, the prejudices and opinions that prevailed in Minneapolis are not dead by any means. The seeds they sow are ready to spring into life and bear like harvest because the roots are still left and will bear their unholy fruit to poison the perception and blind the understanding of those who connect with in regard to the messengers and messages that God sends. Manuscript 40, 1890. 1888 material ch. 1, 115. Some of our brethren have expressed fears that we shall dwell too much upon the subject of justification by faith, but I hope and pray that none will be needlessly alarmed. For there is no danger in presenting this doctrine as it is set forth in the Scriptures. Some of our brethren are not receiving the message from God upon this subject. They appear to be anxious that none of our ministers shall depart from their former manner of teaching the good old doctrines. We inquire, is it not? I am that fresh light should come to the people of God to awaken them to greater earnestness and zeal. Several are, have written to me, inquiring if the message of justification by faith is the third angel's message, and I have answered, it is the third angel's message in verity. Then why the Miss 8, 1890 power? 6. The Church's First Teachers Institute convenes in Battle Creek, Michigan, USA. 1889 Death of Elder Joseph Harvey Wagner on April 17 Elder Joseph Wagner's father. Message first reached South America through literature. National Religious Liberty Association organized July 21. The name was changed later to International Religious Liberty Association, and in 1901 was made a department of the General Conference. 1889 The Fundamental Principles are expanded to 28 sections and published in the yearbook 1889 edition for the first time, leaving the first two on the doctrine of God unchanged. It remains unchanged during its reprinting from 1905-1914 in the SDA yearbooks. The same statement or guideline of belief can be found in the 1905, 1909, 1913, and 1914 yearbooks. After that, it is not published until it was changed solely by F. M. Wilcox in 1931. Seventh-day Adventists have no creed but the Bible, but they hold to certain well-defined points of faith for which they feel prepared to give a reason to every man that asketh them. The following propositions may be taken as a summary of the principal features of their religious faith upon which there is so far, as is known, entire unanimity throughout the body. 1889 Yearbook P. 147 1890 Leadership Attempts to Remove the Name Seventh-day Adventists from the American Sentinel Religious Liberty Journal of the SDA Church to make the magazine popular with other denominations. But this step is averted because a living prophet is present. Ellen White states this policy is the first step in a succession of wrong steps counsels to writer and editors. P. 96. The leading brethren are taking down the road to ecumenical concessions. 1890. Maria L. Huntley died April 18. Born in 1847. 1891. The General Conference sent Ellen White to Australia, contrary to the light given her. This day with God P. 61 E.J. Wagner is sent to England as editor of The Present Truth for ten years to separate him from A.T. Jones and E.G. White. Letter from W.C. White to A.G. Daniels, May 30, 1902. When he accompanies her along with a group of workers landing in December. Union College established at College View, Nebraska. 1892 Death of Elder Roswell F. Cottrell. Walla College established at Walla Walla, Washington. 1892 Bible Students Library Series Lessons for the Public. Hash 90 The Bible Doctrine of the Trinity. A print of article in the New York Independent in November 14, 1889. Author Samuel Spear Nonestier. Promoted one God subsisting and acting in three hypostases slash persons, but also in eternal divine subordination of the Son to the Father. The tact used terms not generally used by Adventists, but it is generally no Trinitarian in content. 1893 Ellen White stated the Church 
is not Babylon for the time and place. The testimony is, nothing is ignored, nothing is cast aside, but time and place must be considered. Selected Messages, Book 1, P. 57, Portland, Oregon Sanitarium Established. Fairmont Union College, the first Adventist college outside of the United States, opens in Kenilworth, South Africa, February 1, 1893, death of M. E. Cornell, November 2, the way in India. 1894, Miss Georgia Burris reached Calcutta as our first missionary to India. Missionaries sent to Matty Bellens, South Africa, reached Bilawayo, July 4. F. H. Westville, our fifth minister to South America. Union Training School for the three Scandinavian countries. Opened at Frederick Chevin, Denmark. Herbert Camden Lacey attends Sunday Keeping Slash Trinitarian Meeting as Battle Creek College Delegate to Student Volunteer Movement for Foreign Missions in Michigan. Lacey reaccepts the Trinity Doctrine as he came originally from the Anglican Church of England into Adventism. Sister White warns, it is a grave mistake on the part of those who are children of God to seek to bridge the gulf that separate them from the children of darkness by yielding principle. By compromising the truth. That show April 9, 1894 par. 6. It is a backsliding church that lessens the distance between itself and the papacy. St. Feb. 19, 1894. 1895. Sister White warns the leadership. In Battle Creek the Lord has not placed any one of his human agencies under the dictation and control of those who are themselves but erring mortals. But there is a power exercised in Battle Creek that God has not given, and he will judge those who assume this authority. Brethren leave God to rule. TM 347.3 She also warns the General Conference is itself becoming corrupted with wrong sentiments and principles. In the working up of plans the same principles are manifest, that have controlled matters at Battle Creek for quite a length of time. Ellen White, Letter 55, September 19, 1895, Power. 2. 1895, D. A. Robinson began work in Calcutta, India. Hamburg Publishing House established in Germany. Battle Creek Sanitarium establishes the First Adventist, True L. of Medicine, American Medical Missionary College, with John Harvey Kellogg as president. James Edson White begins the first church school for African Americans aboard the Morning Star, in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Workers from South Africa and North America established Salusi Mission in Matty Bleland after receiving a grant of 12,000 acres of land from Cecil Rhodes to educate Africans. 1896 Sanitarium in Boulder, Colorado is established. Herbert Camden Lacey lectures on Trinity in Corenbong, Australia. Sister Marion Davis, literary assistant, to Sister White takes copious notes. A. G. Daniels does not oppose the lectures. They see letters to Leroy Froome, 1945. Recommendations for essential change at general conference session to choose one man as president, but the brethren are advised that it is not wise to do so. Len White warns to place men where God should be placed, does not honor or glorify God. Is the president of the general conference to be the guard of the people. Are the men at Battle Creek to be regarded as infinite in wisdom? C.C. for man. TM 375.2. Hookwood Industrial School opens in Huntsville, Alabama, as a training school for African Americans after General Conference President O. A. Wilson personally leads a commission to prepare buildings and land. Battle Creek College establishes the first Adventist teacher preparation department, led by Frederick Griggs, 1897 Doctor. John Harvey Kellogg presents his first concepts leading to pantheism at a series of studies he gave at the General Conference session, G.A. When elected president of the General Conference, February 19, publishing house established at Buenos Aires, Argentina, South America. Sanitarium established in Scottsburg, Denmark. 1897 Avondale School for Christian Workers, the future Avondale College, begins classes in Corenbon, Australia, with C. B. Hughes as principal. E. A. Sutherland, president of Battle Creek College, launches the movement of 97, which dramatically increases the number of church schools. 1898 First Number, the Oriental Watchman issued in Calcutta, W. A. Spicer, editor. Trinitarian Type King's Messenger article is printed in Review and Herald, The Guardman. 
Ellen White states, the sea church is in the Laodicean state. The presence of God is not in her midst. Miss 156, 1898 Notebook Leaflets from Elmshaven Library, Volume. One Need of Self-Sacrificing Effort, p. 99. Ellen White writes, It has been some years since I have considered the General Conference as the voice of God. Manuscript Releases 17, p. 216, 1898. Last Day Events, p. 50.3, 1899 New England Sanitarium Established at South Lancaster, Mass. Removed to Melrose, Mass. 1902, 1900 P.T. Agon begins a campaign to eliminate the debts of Adventist schools and other institutions. Ellen White donates the proceeds from the sale of Christ's object lessons to raise money for schools. Teachers from North America's 220 elementary schools gather at Battle Creek, Michigan, for the church's first institute for church school teachers. 1901 The American Standard Version of the Bible is first published. This move towards a common Bible between Catholics and Protestants will influence Adventism in small steps away from truth. 1901 Arthur G. Daniels elected president of the General Conference, April 2. Even against the counsel of Ellen White, he would stay put in that position for 21 years. Young People's Walk organized in connection with the Sabbath School Department. Duncombe Hall Missionary College, our first British school established in London, England with H.R. Allspear's principal. Southern Publishing Association established at Nashville, Tennessee. H. P. Hossa died September 11. Born October 5, 1856. Stated by Ellen White, it is working upon wrong principles that has brought the cause of God into its present embarrassment. The people have lost confidence in those who have the management of the work. Yet we hear that the voice of the conference is the voice of God. Every time I have heard this, I have thought that it was almost blasphemy. We have reached the time when the work cannot advance while wrong principles are cherished. Manuscript 37, 1901. The General Conference creates the Educational Department with John Harvey Kellogg as chairman and P. E. T. Magan as secretary. 1902 John Harvey Kellogg prepares to publish his work, The Living Temple. He is told not to include his new theories, but ignores the council. He tries to gain approval at the Autumn Council for his book to be published, but a letter from Ellen White to Daniels counsels him to have nothing to do with the book. Kellogg takes his manuscript to the Review and Herald Publishing House as outside walk, and they agree to print it. The Battle Creek Sanitarium, February 18, and the Review and Herald Printing Office, December 30, burn to the ground, and along with it the proofs of Kellogg's book Living Temple. He then takes the manuscript to a non Adventist printer. Twenty-three fires would happen between 1901 and 1923. Judgment has ruled from the heavens above, but leaders only scoff at the idea. Battle Creek College moved to Berrien Springs. Mitch 1902 Ellen White feels perplexed and frustrated with the general conference and decides to withdraw herself from all their meetings. She writes to her sons Edson and Willie, I have but very little confidence that the Lord is giving these men in positions of responsibility, spiritual eyesight, and heavenly discernment. I am thrown into perplexity over their course, and I desire now to attend to my special work, to have no part in any of their councils, and to attend no camp meetings, nigh or follow. My mind shall not be dragged into confusion by the tendency they manifest to work directly contrary to the light that God has given me. I am done. I will preserve my God-given intelligence. My voice has been heard in the different conferences, and at camp meetings, I must now make a change. I shall therefore leave leave them to receive word from the Bible. This is the light given me, and I shall not depart from it. Letter W. 186, 2 December 1902 to Edson, and Willie White P. 4, 5. 1903 crisis begins with Living Temple and the Alpha Heresy. Ellen prints the book in which he has placed his theories. Ellen White says they are spiritualistic and akin to pantheism special testimonies be no. 6. P. 41. She says these teachings are the author of deadly heresies 1. S. M. 200, and that the Omega would follow in a little while. I tremble for our people. In Living Temple the assertion is made that God is in the flower, in the leaf, in the sinner. But God does not live in the sinner. The word declares that he abides only in the hearts of those who love him and do righteousness. 
God does not abide in the heart of the sinner. It is the enemy who abides there. Commons and Talks, Volume 1 P. 341-343, but Kellogg claims that his book is in harmony with Ellen White's writings and can be sustained by statements from the testimonies. Ellen White tells him he has taken her statements away from their connection and interpreted them according to his own mind. I saw what was coming in, and I saw that our brethren were blind. They did not realize the danger. Sermons and Talks, Volume M. P. 344. In a vision, Ellen White sees a platform, braced by solid timbers the truths of the Word of God. Someone high in responsibility in the medical work was directing this man, and that man to loosen the timbers supporting this platform, selected messages, book on P. 204. 1903 Doctor. Ellen admitted to A. G. Daniels that he had come to believe in the Trinity, letter A. G. Daniels to Willie Clarence White, October 291903. From counsel, the understanding of the character and personality of God comes under threat. Arthur G. Daniels is concerned that the supporters of Living Temple would cause a confrontation and dares not call for a vote. Ellen White writes to him, be careful how you sustain the sentiments of this book regarding the personality of God. It has been represented to me that the writer of this book is on a false track. Keepers of the Fame, No. 6, Dr. Alan Lindsay. After the Council, Daniels writes to W.C. White regarding the proposed changes Kellogg has planned for the book. Regarding Dr. Plans for revising and republishing Living Temple. Within a short time, he had come to believe in the Trinity and could now see pretty clearly where all the difficulty was. He now believed in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and his view was that it was God the Holy Ghost and not God the Father that filled all space and every living thing. 29, 1903 p. 12. Ellen White writes to Kellogg, You are not definitely clear on the personality of God, which is everything to us as a people. You have virtually destroyed the Lord God himself. Letter 300, The Elmshaven Years, Volume F of 1900-1905. Arthur L. White, 1941, she further predicts what will happen in the future, including a supposed reformation, but it will not be a good and honest one. Enemy of Souls has sought to bring in the supposition that a great reformation was to take place among Seventh-day Adventists, and that this reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization. Were this reformation to take place, what would result? The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church would be discarded. Our religion would be changed. The fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the last fifty years would be accounted as error. A new organization would be established. Books of a new order would be written. A system of intellectual philosophy would be introduced. Nothing would be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement. The leaders would teach that virtue is better than vice, but God being removed, they would place their dependence on human power, which, without God, is worthless. Their foundation would be built on the sand, and storm and tempest would sweep away the structure. Ellen White, Letter 242, P. 13, 1903. 1903, a new constitution is proposed to provide for the election of a G.C. president who will be given a mandate from the church. This will give the president and leading officers authority to enact what they think the people need. Arthur G. Daniels by himself is made president for the next twenty years. The new constitution provides for the exec committee of twenty-five members to have full administrative power between sessions for only five members as a quorum to take steps that will involve the whole committee. Ellen White writes, these principles are so foreign to God's principles that God cannot bless those who vote upon them. GCB 1903 p. 152 E.J. Wagner also objects, it is fundamentally and diametrically opposed to the principles of organization as set forth in the Bible. GCB 1903 Percy Magan. These are the same principles and introduced in precisely the same way as they were hundreds of years ago when the papacy was made. GCB Day 3, No. 10 p. 158 t. Jones states, This proposed constitution is subversive of the principles of organization given to us at the GC of 1897 and that of 1901. GCB 1903 p. 152, 
153 this G. The session has rejected the 1897 and 1901 recommendations. 1903 Death of Uriah Smith, March 6. Wall May 2, 1832. Doctor. John Harvey Kellogg promotes Trinitarian doctrines in Battle Creek after converting from pantheism. Kellogg asks Jones to teach at Battle Creek College. Wagner moves to Battle Creek, placing him in great peril. Ellen White writes to him, Satan is working stealthily and tiringly to affect your downfall through his specious temptations. He helps to lead you into the mazes of spiritualism. Letter 231, 1903. A. La Rue died April 26, at Hong Kong, China. Dedication of the new building of the Battle Creek Sanitarium. May 30 to June 1, 1903. Headquarters of the General Conference moved to Washington, D.C., August 10. First number of the review printed in Washington, August 20. 1904, the General Conference incorporates itself and fulfills the prophecy from Ellen White's letter 242-1903, describing a new organization would be established, would be able to stand in the way of the new movement. The Articles of Incorporation are published in the Church's 1905-year book. Ellen White has a vision in which the angel says to Jones and Wagner, Sentiments that you have received in harmony with the special theories presented in the Book Living Temple are not pure truth. There is a commingling of truth and error, separate entirely from the bewitching, misleading sentiments that run through Living Temple. Letter 279, 1904. Ellen White has another vision of Kellogg, the subject upon which he was speaking was life and the relation of God to all living things. In his presentations, he cloaked the matter somewhat, but in reality he was presenting, as of the highest value, scientific theories which are akin to pantheism. I was astonished to see with what enthusiasm the sophistries and deceptive theories were received. The influence of this talk gave the speaker encouragement to call for a council of our brethren at Battle Creek for a further examination of these seducing sentiments. Special Testimony Series B. No. 6. B. 210. Rebellion and apostasy are in the very air. We breathe. Through SM 58, the apostasy will develop into darkness deep, as midnight impenetrable, a sackcloth of hair, and will increase in strength until the coming of Jesus. Ellen White Manuscript Releases, Volume 7, p. 185.1. In 1904, Ellen White writes, For the past fifty years, every phase of heresy has been brought to bear upon us. Messages of every order and kind have been urged upon Seventh-day Adventists to take the place of the truth which, point by point, has been sought out by prayer study, and testified to by the miracle-looking power of the Lord. Special Testimonies Series B-2P59 Notice that in 1904 the foundation of faith has been firmly established. Our people do not realize how firmly the foundation of our faith has been laid. My husband, Elder Joseph Bates, Father Pierce, Elder Hiram Edson, and others who were keen, noble, and true, were among those who, after the passing of the time, in 1844, searched for the truth as for hidden treasure. When they came to the point in their study where they said, We can do nothing more, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon me, I would be taken off in vision, and a clear explanation of the passages we had been studying would be given me, with instruction, as to how we were to labor and teach effectively. This light was given that helped us to understand the scriptures in regard to Christ, his mission, and his priesthood. A line of truth extending from the time to the time when we shall enter the city of God was made plain to me, and I gave to others the instruction that the Lord had given me. 1SM 206.4 1904 September 21 Date of the first issue of the Signs of the Times after the removal of the Pacific Press Publishing Association from Oakland to Mountain View, Calif. Hinsdale Sanitarium established at Hinsdale, Illinois. Washington Training College established in Tacoma Park, M.D. Glan, Switzerland Sanitarium established at Glan, on Lake Geneva. Paradise Valley Sanitarium established National City, Calif. 1905 General Conference officers moved from the city of Washington to Tacoma Park, Washington, D.C. in February. The Southern California Conference buys a resort hotel that will become Loma Linda University, and the following year opens a school of nursing. Loma Linda, California Sanitarium established. 
Planetarium established in Glendale, Calif, publishing house established in Brazil, South America. Signs of the Times Publishing House Established, Shanghai, China. The 28 Fundamental Principles of 1889 Synopsis of Our Faith is inserted again in the Church, Yearbook, and continues until 1914. This is the core belief of truth that was born from the foundation of our faith through the pioneers. Ellen White confirms these principles. Every pillar that he has established is to be strengthened. We cannot now step off the foundation that God has established. We cannot now enter into any new organization, for this would mean apostasy from the Truth Manuscript 129, 1905. Past fifty years have not dimmed one jot or principle of our faith as we received the great and wonderful evidences that were made certain to us in 1844, after the passing of the time. Not a word is changed or denied. Letter 326, December 4, 1905 the upward look 352.4. 1905 Daniel Berger dies. Ellen White says the writings of the pioneers should be reproduced. Has given me light regarding our periodicals. What is it? He has said that the dead are to speak. How? Their work shall follow them. We are to repeat the words of the pioneers in our work, who knew what it cost to search for the truth as for hidden treasure, and who labored to lay the foundation of our work. They moved forward step by step under the influence of the Spirit of God. One by one these pioneers are passing away. The word given me is let that which these men have written in the past be reproduced. R.H. May 25, 1905. 1906 Pacific Press Publishers The First Adventist Church School Manual. Main building of the Pacific Press Publishing Company. Mountain View, Caliph. Destroyed by fire. July 20. 1907 name adopted for the Missionary Volunteer Department at the First General Missionary Volunteer Convention, Mount Vernon, Ohio. A Seventh-day Adventist Church organized in Tokyo, Japan in June. Washington Sanitarium dedicated June 12. Washington Training College in Tacoma Park, Maryland becomes the Washington Foreign Missionary Seminary with H. All Salisbury is present. Apostasy is here. With the apostasy of Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, Ellen White warns, the time of this apostasy is here. Every conceivable effort will be made to throw doubt upon the positions we have occupied for over half a century. Letter 410-1907-P2 to her son J. E. White, Old 26, 1907, 7 Mr. 195, 1908 Florida Sanitarium Established at Orlando, Florida. Publishing House Established at Tokyo, Japan. 1909 Pacific Union College established at St. Helena, Calif. 1910 Ellen White calls out A. G. Daniels and W. W. Prescott for their work in picking flaws and trying to change our books and writings. Manuscript 67, 1910. 1911 A total rewrite of the great controversy happens. Complete chapters are added in that didn't exist previously. Besides punctuation changes, Bible scriptures are added portions from the 1884 edition, are removed and slash or changed completely. It would be eight years later that W. W. Prescott would make a bold confession as to his walk in this deed. The College of Medical Evangelists receives a C rating from the American Medical Association, sparking a 25-year debate over accreditation. 1912 The Review and Herald reprints the original principles with the first two unchanged, one God and one Lord. August 22, 1912 P4. Stanborough Park Sanitarium established at Stanborough Park, Watford Hertz, England. 1913 Francis M. Clennon Wilcox publishes supposed Trinitarian tract. Strategically placed next to it in the next column is a quote from Sister White taken from Desire of Ages from 1898 to paint a false picture of belief in R and H volume. 6, October 9, 1913, P21. People today are led to believe she put it there and knew what was published next to her name. This was really dishonest. At this time two years from death she is really feeble and has no say or connection what takes place in the Review and Herald. Wilcox rolls out the Divine Trinity, which includes the Holy Spirit, as the third person of the Godhead. This sets the stage for making the Godhead used exclusively by Ellen White, equivalent with Wilcox's Divine Trinity. This is apparently a response to counter the claim published 
by James Gray of the Moody Bible Institute that Adventists deny the Trinity James Gray. Bible Problems Explained, 1913. Wilcox is concerned with what evangelicals and other Christians think about us. We are different. We are to be and remain a peculiar people. But there would change as more and more Sunday converts came into the denomination. 1913 Far Eastern Division of the General Conference Organized. 1914 Two percent of the members were disfellowshipped from the German Seventh-day Adventist Church because they declared that participation in war service and that on the Sabbath Saturday cannot be reconciled with the Adventist doctrine. The disfellowship believers have considered themselves as the true keepers and defenders of Adventism. The last time the original fundamental principles from 1872 were repeated over time would be published in the SDA yearbook. This was part of the foundation of the faith that started out in the 1850s. Great changes are made to the book Bible Readings for the Home Circle. This book remained unchanged from its original published date of 1888 to its last publishing in 1912 prior to this. Found on page 29, in the chapter A Remarkable Symbol, is a note on prophecy and history that has since been removed and modified in later editions. Considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Dan. 7. 8. Notes. We must, then, look for the development of the little horn this side of a B-483. About that time, in fact, there was a pretentious power, seeking acknowledgment of its claims. As early as the beginning of the sixth century, the bishops of Rome had become powerful enough to exert considerable of that. Influence of the imperial court, which ere long exalted them to a station where they could command the kings of the earth. There was only one hindrance to their supremacy, the opposition of the Aryan powers to the doctrines of the Catholics, especially to that of the Trinity. These, these opposing powers were rooted up the Hadulai in 493, the Vandals in 534, and the Ostrogoths in 538. See Students Gibbon P.P. 3. 19. The history of the little horn plucking up the three horns happened to be called Arian. This important detail of their identity has been removed. They were non-Trinitarian Germanic tribes who would not subscribe to Rome's Trinity doctrine and believe the Hanuli, Vandals, and the Ostrogoths. 1915-0. A. Wilson dies, January 22 at Hinsdale, Illinois. Born July 28, 1845. Ellen White warns of great changes to take place after her death. Charge to tell our people that do not realize that the devil has device after device, and he carries them out in ways that they do not expect. Agencies will invent ways to make sinners out of saints. I tell you now that when I am laid to rest, great changes will take place. I do not know when I shall be taken. And I desire to war all against the devices of the devil. I want the people to know that I warned them fully before my death. Manuscript 1, Feb 24, 1915. Then White dies on July 16, only five months after her last written warning. War November 26, 1827. Part of the original landmarks are removed and put out of the way. The Principles of Faith mostly written from James White and Uriah Smith and first published in 1872 are now gone from the yearbook by a mere general conference statistician, H. Edson Rogers. Rogers was working under the guise of George B. Thompson, Walter T. Knox, William Warren Prescott, Edwin R. Palmer, and Owen H. Evans, representatives of the North American Conference Corporation of Seventh-day Adventists. South India Training School Foreigner of Spicem, Memorial College opens in Coimbatore, under the direction of G. G. Lowry, 1916 Elder Elliot Joseph Wagner and Elder A. C. Bordeaux dies on July 7. 1917 Philippine Seventh-day Adventist Academy later the Adventist University of the Philippines opens. 1918 Death of Elder George I. Butler on July 25 born November 12, 1834 Elder James H. Morrison and Elder W. H. Littlejohn. R.C. Porter dies, July 29, born April 29, 1858. 1919 Bible and Teachers Conference takes place in secrecy, with the discussion becoming heated at times, 
as some in leadership positions test the waters to see if the doctrine of the Trinity can be brought in. There is enough resistance to table the conversation for another time. The recorded minutes for this five-week-long event, July 1, August 9, disappears for 55 years until 1974. Arthur G. Annals, William Warren Prescott, Herbert Lacey, among others, are working as agents of Satan. An attempt at discrediting the inspiration of Ellen White is made. Some of the subjects addressed included the person and mediatorial work of Christ, the nature of the Holy Spirit, the Trinity Doctrine, the Two Covenants, principles of prophetic interpretation, the Seven Trumpets, the Beasts of Revelation 13, and of course questioning the nature of inspiration of the spirit of prophecy as related to the inspiration of the Bible. 1922 Tabernacle, a battle creek destroyed by fire. January 7. Judson Washburn writes an open letter to Daniel saying the 1919 Bible Conference was the most terrible thing that had ever happened in the history of this denomination. J. S. Washburn, an open letter to Elder G. Daniels, and an appeal to the General Conference, 1922 p. 2829. Another letter written by Washburn to Claude Holmes is published as a 36-page tract called The Startling Omega and Its True Geniality. It is distributed at the General Conference of 1922. In this tract he mentions that the college in Washington has become a nest of higher criticism, and he blames A. G. Daniels and W. W. Prescott for all the theological problems. Omega Tract, Washburn P. 16. W. A. Spicer elected president of the General Conf, May 11. 1922 Elder Stephen Haskell dies, author of many best-selling books and Adventist pioneer, on October 9 or on April 22, 1833. 1923 Elder Alonzo Trevor Jones Elder o. A. Johnson and J. O. Wallace dies, born December 26, 1845. 1924 John Norton Loughborough, the last of the first generation Corps of Pioneers, dies at St. Helena Sanitarium in California, April 7. Born January 26, 1832. 1926 Leroy Froome, who was first Associate Secretary, and then made secretary of the ministerial association until 1950 is asked to give studies on the Holy Spirit at the ministerial institute in the North American division. Since he cannot find material suited to his beliefs and agenda within our own denomination, he goes to authors outside our faith Babylon to reference their writings. Gradually the meaning of the word divine changed until it meant not fully divine. We do not know how it changed, but Trinitarians were using the term deity instead of divine. Once divine and deity meant the same. When Froome uses the words all the fullness of the Godhead, he is making two statements an Arian or semi-Arian belief is not true Christianity, and the Trinity has a saviour with full deity. 1926 General Conference Working Policy 75 is adopted. SDA Church becomes a part of evangelical churches. The policy states, we recognize every agency that lifts up Christ before men as a part of the divine plan for the evangelization of the world, and we hold in high esteem the Christian men and women in other communions who are engaged in winning souls to Christ. Relationship to other societies, GC Go, 1926. This would include the Jesuit order. Then White has worn shall this power, whose record for a thousand years is written in the blood of the saints, but we now acknowledge as a part of the Church of Christ. Great Controversy, 1888 p. 571.1 This is the first wrong step toward ecumenical concessions taken by the G.C. Only two years after the death of the last of the Corps of the Pioneers first generation, John Loughborough, 1928 Death of Elder James Edson White, son of James and Ellen White, 1928 Leroy Froome, founder of Ministry Magazine, begins promoting the American Revised Standard Version and demotes the King James Bible to not accurate and old-fashioned status. He tours the U.S., promoting the Sunday Trinity to Adventist ministers and writes the book The Coming of the Comforter. 1928 The Coming of the Comforter, a pro-Trinity book by Leary Froome is published from claims opposition to the Trinity arose from some of the old-timers as he writes. 
cannot imagine how I was pummeled by some of the old-timers, because I pressed on the personality of the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Godhead. Letter from Froome to Dr. O. H. Christensen, October 271,960. He would later admit in 1971 in his book, Movement of Destiny, that he went to authors outside of our denomination for the material he would use for this book. In other words, authors from Babylon. 1928 William Warren Prescott, who was educated by the secular Dartmouth College, writes eleven articles in the Signs of the Times documenting the Sunday scholars' proof of the inferiority of the King James Bible. The Bible of the Pioneers is under assault and being replaced by modern corrupt versions. 1928 General Conference leadership adopts the American Revised Version Bible, which is inspired by the Jesuits of Rome above the authorized KJV Bible of the Pioneers. This version comes from scholars that rely on two manuscripts, the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus Constantine State Bibles. This is the second wrong step toward ecumenism. This step is now possible with the passing of the last pioneer. 1929 Healing of the Deadly Wound of the Papacy, the Lateran Treaty is signed between Italy and the Vatican, settling the Roman question. Italy now recognizes the Vatican city-state as an independent state and agrees to give the Church financial compensation for the loss of the papal states. Though the accreditation is decided to be desirous by the inner circle of our leading men, wanting it to be accepted and received into our colleges. The educational system devised by the Jesuits will begin to come into influence. This was a goal of a G. Daniels along with the help of W. W. Prescott, A. T. Robinson writes an article one God and one mediator for the review and herald, quoting one core. 1528, giving the impression that the one God is the Father only. This is the solid footing that Adventism started with. 1930 General Conference votes to publish a church manual. In 1883 the GC session had voted no. They also decided it was time for a new statement of beliefs. This is the third wrong step toward ecumenism. Attitudes have now changed and become more liberal. Theological wounds have healed. The last of the pioneers has died, and their voices are no longer heard. Leadership wants to change the old SDA doctrines on one the final atonement in heaven, two the human nature of Christ, three the place of scripture and prophecy in the church, and four the doctrine of the Trinity, as taught by evangelicals. Ellen White warns, in no respect is God's work to be circumscribed by man-made restrictions. Any of the ambitious plans and policies that have been made are not endorsed by him. 1 Mr. 245. 1930 Our Authorized Bible Vindicated by B.G. Wilkinson is published, documenting the origins and history of the King James Bible. The General Conference tries to discontinue the book and Wilkinson writes a second book in defense of his position, answers to objections to our authorized Bible vindicated. October 4 Sabbath School lesson still documents our original beliefs from the beginning about Jesus. Jesus was the Son of God before he was born of the Virgin Mary. He was the unlibgotten Son of God from the days of eternity, when on earth he was divinity incarnate, clothed in human flesh with all its weaknesses. To the unbeliever he was only a man. Elfish hearts could not read his motives, sin-blinded souls could not see his divinity of character. Yet it was there, though the world nay, his own people knew it not, and crucified him. But his resurrection from the dead declared his holiness, his power over sin, his dominion over death, his divinity. Acts 2.24 Sadly, we have theologians in recent times 2015-2020 go on record to say that Christ as a son is only a metaphor. There is not really a father and son. 1931 Church leaders in Africa request a statement that will assist in a better understanding of our work. Introduction In answer to the request, a suitable statement of faith is placed in the 1931 Yearbook. The Yearbook with new statement of beliefs is published, without a vote or authority. The G. C. President C. H. Watson is voted the authority to select a committee of four men of which he is a member to prepare a statement for publication in the yearbook. The four are G.C. Associate Secretary M. E. Kern, Review Editor F. M. Wilcox, Manager of Review and Herald E. R. Palmer, and G.C. President C. H. Watson. Francis McClellan Wilcox, 
editor for the Review and Herald for 33 years. Lone writes up the new statement of beliefs with 22 fundamental beliefs with the approval of the committee and passes it over to Edson Rogers G. The statistician from 1900 through 1941 who places it in the 1931 yearbook. Leroy Froome would later claim there was a consensus because no one complained. He fails to mention the church was unaware of this action. President Watson knows, but does not seek to take official action. Thus the statement of beliefs is added not by approval of the G. E., but by common consent and is accepted without challenge. Froome, Movement of Destiny P. 414. The first two fundamental principles of James White 1872-1874-1889-1914 yearbook state in part. 1. That there is one God. Everywhere present, by his representative, the Holy Spirit. 2. That there is one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Eternal Father, that he took on him the nature of the seed of Abraham, for the redemption of our fallen race. The 1931 yearbook now states that the Godhead or Trinity consists of the Eternal Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Eternal Father, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, P. 377. Points that are entirely removed from the 1872-1874-1889 fundamental principles include prophecy as a part of God's revelation to man, world history fulfills Bible prophecy, and papacy man of sin changed the Sabbath. The pioneer view on the post four human nature of Christ is changed to a pre four human nature. Orca final atonement in the most holy place since 1844 is omitted and now replaced with atonement being completed on the cross. Christ living to make intercession for us and the cleansing of the sanctuary involving the work of blotting out sins is now replaced with only a work of judgment. Now the SDA Church has a new statement on the Trinity, a new Christ with an unfallen human nature instead of a fallen but not corrupted human nature. New final atonement that was completed on the cross rather than finished in the most holy place in heaven. These doctrinal changes place the SDA Church in harmony with the Sunday keeping churches of Babylon and make it possible for ecumenical ties with other denominations. To substantiate these new apostate doctrines, a new Bible, the American Revised Version now approved by the Papacy, is embraced. 1932 The First Church Manual is published with the 22 Articles of Fundamental Beliefs, despite G. I. Butler's objection to having a church manual in 1883 or H. November 20. Now the church has an official creed for the first time. In 1861 James White warned making a creed is setting the stakes and barring up the way to all future advancement. They say virtually that the Lord must not do anything further than what has been marked out in the creed. A creed and the spiritual gifts thus stand in direct opposition to each other. The Bible is our creed. We reject everything in the form of a human creed. R. H. October 8, 1861. Pacific Union College earns accreditation from the Board of Regents, the first Adventist college to obtain denominational accreditation. Philippine Junior College becomes Philippine Union College, the first Adventist four-year degree-granting institution outside North America. 1933 Pacific Union College is awarded accreditation by Northwest Association of Secondary and Higher Schools, the first Adventist college to be regionally accredited. 1934 The Advanced Bible School Foreigner of the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary is organized at Pacific Union College in Anwin, California. 1935 Death of Arthur Grosvenor Daniels. One of the key men in apostasy. Letter from H. W. Carr to Billy White asking about the nature of the Holy Spirit as being promoted by some of the leaders being another separate person from the Father and the Son. Sister White explaining that the Spirit of God and of Christ, Holy Spirit, is a divine personality began to be twisted into someone else other than Christ is the Spirit. Part of Willie White's responses, the statements and the arguments of some of our ministers in their effort to prove that the Holy Spirit was an individual, as our God, the Father and Christ. The eternal sonner perplex me and sometimes they have made me sad. One popular teacher said we may regard him, the Holy Spirit, as the fellow who is down here running things. Letter April 30, 1935 
1936 The General Conference Sabbath School Committee publishes a series of Sabbath School lesson studies starting with the 48th quarter 1936 to the 2 and D quarter 1938 for the Church, which is intended to show the world what Seventh-day Adventists officially believe, and purportedly to show that the Church still upholds the Adventist pioneer position and the nature of God and Christ. The G. The committee voted six men including F. M. Wilcox and M. E. Kern in late 1935 to sit with the Sabbath School Department Lessons Committee when they compiled the studies on essential Bible doctrines. The studies apply Trinitarian language to non-Trinitarian belief, in effect subtly reinterpreting it in Trinitarian terms. In the third week of the 40th quarter 1936 lesson, under the title The Godhead, the word Trinity is used twice, once as a heading and once as a subheading. Under the Trinity heading, they state that three powers wrought in the work of creation, and that the name God is used of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit a kind of heavenly family name. These three constitute the Godhead. Then under the heading Unity of the Godhead, they state the Father is in the Son, and the Son is in the Father. The Spirit is the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ. Hence all three dwell together, and the three are one. Lesson 3 P. 10 The only other time that the word Trinity is mentioned again is in Lesson 10, which states, since the Divine Trinity is composed of three persons, there is established a personal relationship between the Godhead and the one baptized. December 5 P. 31 Nothing else is said about the word Trinity, and the phrase Trinity doctrine is not used, but hints of it are being subtly conveyed. At this point, the begotten belief is still the official belief. Time and death is needed to change it to an unbegotten belief to support the false claim that Christ could not be begotten and yet be fully God in his pre-existence. Ellen White believed that Christ was truly begotten and still truly God, for she said in 1905, The Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, is truly God in infinity, but not in personality. Manuscript 116, December 19, 1905 the 40th quarter lesson rightly concludes regarding the pre-existence of Christ, that he was therefore no part of creation, but was begotten of the Father in the days of eternity, and was very God himself. Lesson 4, P13. In the section regarding the deity of Christ, the lesson rightly recognizes that Christ, as the begotten Son, has inherited God's name, and therefore can rightly be called God. Though it seems that as late as 1936, Ellen White's writings have actually not changed the beliefs of the Church about the pre-existence of Christ as the truly divine begotten Son of God, contrary to later claims that they have. Also at this point the Holy Spirit is still not officially regarded as a divine person exactly like God and Christ, or persons. The lesson states, hence the Father sends the Spirit in the name of the Son, that is as the Son's representative. The Spirit proceedeth from the Father to do his walk in the earth. Hence the Father sends the Spirit and the Son sends the Spirit. The Son speaks what the Father gives him to speak and the Spirit speaks what the Son gives him to speak. The Spirit is both the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ. Lesson 3 P. 11. 1936 Benjamin Wilkinson answers a letter from Dr. T. S. That is saying, replying to your letter of October 13 regarding the doctrine of the Trinity, I will say that seventh day. Adventists knew not, and never have accepted the dark, mysterious Catholic doctrine of the Trinity. HTTP slash slash only 27. Tripod. Come slash by Venture Spirit. HTM. After heated debate, General Conference, session delegates approve of regional accreditation for Adventist colleges. 1937 Death of Willie C. White, son of James and Ellen White. 1939 W.W. Prescott preaches a sermon at the Tacoma Park Church, where he says that Scripture clearly implied the doctrine of the Trinity. There are three persons in the Godhead, but they are, are so mysteriously and indissolubly related to each other that the presence of one is equivalent to the presence of the other. Elder Judson S. Washburn protests what he hears and sees happening in the church by writing a letter to the G.C. President J. L. McElhaney against the Trinity doctrine. It was circulated by a conference president to 32 ministers. 1941 General Conference Committee votes that the statement of beliefs is made available in leaflet form and officially released as our accepted statement of faith. 
The committee also approves the Uniform Baptismal Covenant, or VOW in certificate form, based on the now generally accepted Fundamental Beliefs Declaration of 1931. G. The session in San Francisco 13 men led by Prescott formulate the Trinitarian worded baptismal vow. They call the Father the first person, Jesus the second person, and the Holy Spirit the third person. The word Trinity is not used. 1941-44 Hymnal Christ in Song and Hymns and two songbook copies are ordered back to the conferences for burning so that a new church hymnal with Trinitarian influence can replace them. This was under the guise of Roy Allen Anderson. 1943 John Harvey Kellogg dies after seducing many to his heresy, a key member of apostasy. 1944 removal by committee of all 18 non-Trinitarian statements from Uriah Smith's book Daniel and the Revelation in attempt to cover up history. They eliminate every portion that said Christ was begotten of the Father. W. W. Prescott and others change the meaning of the daily sacrifice in the 2300 days message. Changes are also made to spirit of prophecy books, such as lowercase change to capital letters for third person. Truth Triumphant by B.G. Wilkinson is published, an exhaustive study of the history of God's church in the wilderness. It contains strong statements against the Trinity doctrine. Eroy Fru is angry and orders the destruction of the original offset press plates so the book cannot be reprinted. Death of William Warren Prescott, one of the key men in apostasy. 1945 Leroy Froome published a compilation of Ellen White quotes in Ministry magazine to give credence to the eternity of Christ. Her understanding in this usage was far different than his. 1946 Leadership calls for a committee of four to make a statement of official beliefs. However, it is penned individually by F. M. Wilcox through a statement of belief on the Trinity, originally written in 1931 by him, and unofficially put in the yearbook. The compilation of evangelism, with careful, calculated use of certain Ellen White statements to paint a picture that she was supposedly Trinitarian, was done by Leroy Froome. Boy Alan Anderson and Miss Louise C. Clouser, under the encouragement of Elder Branson 1966 Froome letters. This was thirty-one years after Sister White died. With the intent to deceive, Froome placed these quotes from Ellen White in his book Evangelism, where she had said third person, three great powers, and heavenly trio, etc. But all of these in fact refer to the Spirit of Christ, and not another being. This is how Froome eventually managed to lead the entire Adventist church astray because people did not take the time to research what else Ellen White wrote in this regard on these topics. They just took the one-liners like they were hypnotized. Froome's book has persuaded many non-Trinitarians in the Colombian Union to lay down their arms and become Trinitarians. 1946 The General Conference, after being conditioned for 27 years and a new membership of new members coming into the Church, during those 27 years that knew nothing but the Trinity, voted to retain the 1931 baptismal vow officially. They then voted that changes to the baptismal vow could only be made by the General Conference delegates in official session. Movement of Destiny, P. 422, the Trinity now, was protected by the necessity of an entire church voting session. The entire ministry and the world membership now believe the Trinity is true. What hope is there of returning to the Bible truth of the only true God and His Son? 1947, Charles S. Oldecker writes paper hash, 17 The Deity of Christ, clarifying the SDA Church's original stance on the Godhead, a non-Trinitarian article. This would be the last of any major resistance left in the Church for decades to come. 1948 World Council of Churches is formally instituted in Amsterdam. 1949 Bible readings for the Home Circle is revised by D.E. E. Rebock in an attempt to remove any non-Trinitarian or so-called Aryan or semi-Aryan statements. Boy Alan Anderson had his influence in this as well. The meaning of the nature of Christ is removed from future publications. 1950 Death of Herbert Camden Lacey, one of the key men in apostasy. 1950 Elders R. J. Whelan and D. K. Short write a thesis for the GC entitled 1888 Reexamined. This was eventually rejected with ongoing discussions up until 1961. This was a form of correction for the church 
through self-examination and getting back to truth. 1952 a book is copyrighted called Principles of Life and printed in 1956. It has been used by school children as their Bible doctrine study book. One paragraph says, while God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three separate and distinct beings, yet they are all one in nature and character, in purpose pp. 34. One working in such close relationship as to be one, principles of life, p. 28. This is a smear in the personality of God with error, and then mixing a little spirit of prophecy in it for unsuspecting readers to believe it is authentic for men and white. 1955. Death of Elder Judson S. Washburn, one of the last of the connecting links to truth. 1955-56. Evangelical conferences take place between the General Conference represented by Froome, Anderson Reed, Nunra, and Walter Martin, and Donald Barnhouse, editor of Eternity magazine. Are Adventists a cult? That was the question of the Evangelicals. The Trinity Doctrine is one of the first issues discussed. Concessions are made on the Atonement and the humanity of Christ. Nature was changed to that of Adam's nature before the fall. The teaching of the Atonement was changed to completed at the cross instead of commencing at the cross. These changes were required by the Protestant denominations for the SDA Church to be classified as an evangelical Christian church instead of a cult or sect. We submit to the daughters of the harlot in fear of being labeled a cult and reject the spirit of prophecy writings because they do not reflect Adventist theology. But we were previously labeled a cult for years because our beliefs stood out from the rest of Protestantism. Then White warned in 1894 not to bridge the gulf that separates the children of God from the children of darkness. But this is not heeded. Arnold Barnhouse writes in his Eternity magazine, immediately it was perceived that the Adventists were strenuously denying certain doctrinal positions which had been previously attributed to them. The Adventists specifically repudiate any teachings by ministers or members of their faith who have believed proclaimed and written any matter which would classify them among Arians. Eternity, September, 1956. 1957 Questions on Doctrine, a pro-Trinity book is released as the results of bowing to a few evangelical men's opinion. This is to match up the SDA Church with the Protestant and evangelical world, to be accepted so we would not be labelled a cult. Never anywhere in the book or at any other time was the authorship of QD mentioned. It was always stated that a representative group of Seventh-day Adventist leaders, Bible teachers, and editors of E. Froome, W. E. Reed, R. A. Anderson, and T. E. and were produced it. In reality, it was Leroy Edwin Froome who wrote the book all of it. On March 11, 1957, M. L. Anderson expressed his deep concern in a letter to the General Conference President. The book QD is published. There will be repercussions to the end of the earth that the foundations are being removed from. Ellen Rizan, March 11, 1957, letter to R. R. Igua, quoted in QD, P. Xexi. The officers condone the action of these men if these men are permitted to author or prove of the book to be published. I must protest, and shall feel justified by voice or pen to reveal this conspiracy against God and his people. It is in your hand to split the denomination, or heal it, um. Ellen Risen, June 21, 1957, Letter to R. R. Figure, QDP, XXI. Two weeks later, Anderson again wrote to Figure, It is hard to concentrate, while Rome is burning, or rather, while the enemy is destroying the foundations on which we have built these many years. The very essence of our message, that there is now in the sanctuary above going on a work of judgment, of atonement, is being discarded. Take that away, and you take Adventism away. Free brother figure, this is the greatest apostasy this denomination has ever faced, and it will surely divide the people. It is not one or two men who are advocating this monstrous proposition, but a group of general conference men, plus a number of Bible students with whom they are conferring them. L. And risen July 4, 1957, letter to our, our figure, QDP XXI. About a month after the publication of QD, Andresen shattered by what he found in the book, wrote this letter to Elder Figure, I am grieved at heart, deeply grieved, at the work your advisers have recommended. The unity of the denomination is being broken up, 
and still questions on doctrine is being circulated and recommended. It must promptly be repudiated and recalled if the situation is to be saved M. L. and Resin, December 3, 1957, letter to R. R. Figure, QDPXXI. Known to Anderson, nearly a month earlier, on November 6, a letter went out over Elder Figure's signature to all the Union Conference presidents in North America. He appealed for large group orders that would amount to between 100,000 to 200,000 copies. Broom and Anderson's plan was to smother the opposition by blanketing the Adventist denomination with low-cost copies of the book. A month and a half later, a second letter was mailed to church leaders that a second print run would be for 50,000 copies. But that was soon increased to 100,000, as the leaders recognized that in spite of Andresen's published booklets, it was best for them to fall into line and give 2D the large circulation that the GC requested. Boy Alan Anderson, who was extremely influential, had arranged for thousands of free copies to be mailed to every Christian college and seminary in the world. 1957 The Church declares oneness with the fallen Protestant denominations. We are one with our fellow Christian. Denominational groups in the great fundamentals of the faith once delivered to the saints. Questions on Doctrine P32. SDA Church joins the CWC Christian World Communions. Then White had previously warned. It is a grave mistake on the part of those who are children of God to seek to bridge the gulf that separates the children of light from the children of darkness by yielding principle. By compromising the truth, Review and Harrow, July 24, 1894, 1958, Death of Charles S. Lungecker, a champion of religious liberty. He was an author who stood for the original pioneer views within Adventism. After questions on doctrine came off the press, M. L. Anderson wrote, I weep for my people. This is the apostasy foretold long ago. I have counted the cost it will be to me to continue my opposition, but I am trying to save my beloved denomination from committing suicide. I must be true to my God as I see it, and I must be true to the men that trust me. M. L. Anderson, letter to Figure, March 9, 1958. Andresen ultimately published nine widely circulated papers in late 1957 and early 1958 under the general title of the Atonement. It was followed in 1959 by a second series called Letters to the Churches, which was later published as a 100-page booklet by the same name. As we look back on the situation today, a key problem was that there was only one man at the time who would stand up and be counted. If 10,000 Adventists had been as resolute as Andresen was perhaps our church today would still have its original two beliefs. The General Conference approves the merger of Potomac University and Emmanuel Missionary College in Berrien Springs, Michigan. A new name, Andrews University, is selected two years later. 1961 While assembling in New Daily, the WCC declares the World Council of Churches is a fellowship of churches which accept our Lord Jesus Christ as God and Saviour. Soon this formulation gave rise to questions and requests for a clearer definition of the Christ-centeredness of the Church's common calling. A more explicit expression of the Trinitarian faith and a specific reference to the Holy Scriptures. The result was a reformulation adopted by the Third Assembly which still stands, a fellowship of churches which confess the Lord Jesus Christ as God and Saviour according to the Scriptures, and therefore seek to fulfill together their common calling to the glory of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This formula would be a foundation as a point of reference for WCC members, a source or ground of coherence. 1962 The Second Vatican Council begins to be held, concluding in 1965. The Roman Church repositions itself in relation to the modern world. Major changes occur in the Catholic Church, but the intention remains the same. The final stage is set for the Jesuit Order's Counter-Reformation to take over all the Protestant churches. The World Council of Churches incorporates the Trinity Doctrine in its prerequisite for membership and becomes the foremost ecumenical organization. The 1962 yearbook reprints the Statement of Faith in substantially the same form in which it first appeared in 1931. 1965 Bernard Seton urges the General Conference that our fundamental beliefs need revision. Several of our leaders had just traveled to Geneva, Switzerland 
to enter into negotiations for closer contacts with the World Council of Churches headquarters. 1965, at the close of Vatican I, GC President Ruben Figaro arranges for Bird Beverly Beach to become the SDA ecumenical liaison with other denominations placing him on an ecumenical board. This was a key doctrinal board D of the World Council of Churches in Geneva. He would remain chairman of the board until his retirement in 2000. 1968 Death of Elder B. G. Wilkinson, Ph.D., after 76 years of active church service. This pioneer of Adventism spoke out against the new Trinity doctrine until his death. Sala Sweden World Council of Churches admitted to full membership representatives from non-member churches, which included the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Published on July 12, 1968, New York Times newspaper. The SDA Conference in Finland makes a formal request to the General Conference for women to be ordained into the ministry. 1970 Birkby. He is elected as the Secretary General of the Annual Conference of Secretaries of the Christian World Communions, which represents about two billion Christians and covers more churches than any other organization. He would hold this position until 2003. Bold College becomes the first post secondary school outside North America to achieve accreditation by the Church's Board of Regents. 1971 Movement of Destiny by Leroy Froome gets published. Froome admits to alterations made from 1931 to standard works to correct erroneous views on the Godhead to make them Trinitarian. His historical account says, We began as Semiarians, but steadily rose to become a strong movement, able to take our place among mainline Protestant denominations. Together with them, we wholeheartedly profess Christendom's doctrine of the Trinity and the full deity of Christ. He also makes other admissions of wrongdoing, which include going to Sunday keeping authors for his material that is included in his book The Coming of the Comforter, that was published in 1928. Movement of Destiny, 1971 p. 322, 422. May I here make a frank personal confession? And back between 1926 and 1928, I was asked by our leaders to give a series of studies on the Holy Spirit covering the North American Union Ministerial Institutes of 1928. I found that, aside from priceless leads found in the spirit of prophecy, there was practically nothing in our literature setting forth a sound biblical exposition in this tremendous field of study. There were no previous pathfinding books on the question in our literature. I was compelled to search out a score of valuable books written by men outside of our faith those previously noted for initial clues and suggestions, and to open up beckoning vistas to intensive personal study. Having these I went on from there, but they were decided early helps, and scores, if not hundreds, could confirm the same sobering conviction that some of these other men frequently had a deeper insight into the spiritual things of God than many of our own men then had on the Holy Spirit and the triumphant life. It was still a largely obscure theme. Leroy Froome Movement of Destiny, p. 3, 122. 1972 Future General Conference President. Jan Paulson becomes the first Adventist to graduate from Ecumenical T. Eubingen University. Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger Pope Benedict XVIR is a professor there in dogmatic theology. Australian pastor Desmond Ford receives his second PhD from the University of Manchester while on leave from Avondale College. The effects of outside evangelical teachings from these systems of higher learning will become evident as Ford brings in new theology during the 70s. He would be removed from Avondale in 1977 for the trouble he is causing and shipped off to the USA. But he is installed as a teacher at Pacific Union College which enables him to pollute our young people there for three years. 1973, the General Conference set up a study committee to look at the issue of women's ordination. Bert B. Each secretary of the Northern Europe West Africa Division and company begins social engineering of acceptance of being one with the world in joining the World Council of Churches. He co-authors a book with Lucas Fisher, secretary of the WCC cattle so much in common, between the World Council of Churches and the Seventh-day Adventist Church, published by the WCC, Geneva, Switzerland, 1973, saying, Member Churches of the World Council of Churches, 
and Seventh-day Adventists are in agreement on the fundamental articles of the Christian faith as set forth in the three ancient symbols. Pries Apostolicum, Nicino Constantinopolitum, Athanasium. This agreement finds expression in unqualified acceptance of the doctrines of the Trinity and the two natures, so much in common p. 40. 1974 Death of Leo Ephraim, one of the key men in apostasy. The 1919 Bible Conference transcript is discovered by new archivist Dr. F. Anyost and Dan Mansell at the General Conference Archives. It was hidden away for all of these years. These notes were typewritten from stenographic notes, a few thousand pages stored at the offices of the General Conference. 1975, a non-Trinitarian paper by Edward Edstrom is printed at the request of the board of Walla Walla Valley Academy in book form called Human Spirit, Divine Spirit. Belief in the Trinity had been challenged in 1954 when Muslims confronted fellow pastors and workers in Central Africa who claimed one God Allah. While Christianity appeared to have three separate, distinct gods that were called one, human spirit, divine spirit in charge. If, a year after Froome's death, it was decided not to republish his two books, Movement of Destiny and Questions on Doctrine. 1976 Neil Wilson, president of the North American Division of SDA, gives this sworn statement in the Silver Tabla legal case involving the Seventh day Adventist Church. Although it is true that there was a period in the life of the Seventh day Adventist Church when the denomination took a distinctly anti Roman Catholic viewpoint, and the term hierarchy was used in a pejorative CNC to refer to the papal form of church governance. That attitude on the Church's part was nothing more than a manifestation of widespread anti-popery among conservative Protestant denominations in the early part of this century and the latter part. The last and which has now been assigned to the historical trash heap so far, as the Seventh-day Adventist Church is concerned, Mary K. McLeod lawsuit P. 4, footnote hash 2, docket entry hash 84, EOC verses, EPPA C. 74, 2025 CBR. Sworn statement dated February 6, 1976. Ellen White warned in 1894, it is a backsliding church that lessens the distance between itself and the papacy. Signs of the Times, Feb 19, 1894. 1977 Pope Paul Thy rewards Bert B. Beach for his book with a private audience in the Vatican. Each presents the Pope with a book and a gold medallion confirming friendship of the SDA Church with the Vatican. The medallion is an engraved witness to the validity of the Ten Commandments. While the other commandments are represented simply as Roman numerals, the words of the fourth remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy are written out. W. E. Eva, Adventist Review, book, medallion presented to Pope August 11, 1977, 849 p. 23, however, the seventh day was removed from the text and quoted in the same way as it is quoted in any Roman Catholic catechism. Each represents the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church in an interview of the Vatican Radio referring to the Pope as Holy Father, when Ellen White has clearly warned, Pope is not regarded by God as anything more than a man who is acting out, in our world, the character of the man of sin, representing in his claims the power and authority which Satan claimed in the heavenly courts. 5 Mr. 102, 1978 February. Ministry magazine published a special 16-page edition on ordination, including several papers on a theology of ordination by Rael Dederen and Gottfried Ustowell from Andrews University. Discussing the nature and mission of the church, they also discussed the role of women in ministry in the church. 1979 W. Anthony Eva, and Bernard Seton are working behind the scenes in moving an agenda to adopt a new fundamental beliefs. The revised draft was sent to the theologians at Andrews University to ready it for prime time at the World Conference in April 1980. Back in 1946, a committee put forth an action, making it almost impossible to change any belief statement, but the hurdle was overcome and now moving forward. 1980 World General Conference in Session Dallas TX officially votes to accept the Trinity Doctrine as part of the 27 Fundamental Beliefs of Seventh-day Adventists. By officially approving the Trinity Doctrine as a fundamental doctrine 
of the Seventh-day Adventist. The domination has publicly declared to the world that she is following in the steps of the daughter's fallen churches of the mother of Harat, the Roman Catholic Church, whose central pillar. Uktrin is the Trinity. The SDA Church has left the original mission proclaiming the three angels' messages of God's calling and the firm foundation of our faith fundamental principles that are based upon unquestionable authority. No longer can the present SDA Church be considered as the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. But now simply a counterfeit new movement is prophesied in 1903 by Ellen White. They are now ecumenical ready and compatible with the World Council of Churches. We now subscribe to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is the exact belief that the early Advent pioneers removed themselves from in the 1840s and 1850s when they left the fallen churches to form what would become the Seventh-day Adventists. Not found anywhere is the two and D and three RD angels message along with no identity of the beast Babylon, her four, his image or mark, or God's call to come out of her. 1980 Glacier View Ranch in Colorado is the meeting place of a number of Adventist theologians and administrators to discuss the theology of Desmond Ford. Ford no longer believes in the investigative judgment, the sanctuary message, the traditional Adventist view of the Day of Atonement, and the interpretation of prophecy. Priest Alberto Rivera stated all the mainstream churches were taken over under control of Rome by 1980. Secret Terrorists, p. 108. The General Conference files on May 70th for trademark of its name Seventh-day Adventist. SDA is trademarked now as a commercial entity, the GC. I as a Catholic lawyer to trademark various names, including Seventh-day Adventist under commercial law. This is the first time a Protestant church denomination appeals to the state for protection of their name. This move comes from former pastors and slash or leaders forming other groups bearing the same or similar name as a result of separating themselves from the apostasy that is happening within the main body. They are therefore labelled as offshoot movements as they attempt to hold to the foundation given to the original SDA church before all the changes over time. 1981 Neil C. Wilson General Conference President announces that the church has officially adopted the Trinity Doctrine, which is now number two in the church's 27 fundamental beliefs. He declares before the Seventh-day Adventist Church that there is another universal and truly Catholic organization, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Adventist Review, March 5, 1981 p. 3. 1981 Adventist Review, July 30th Special Issue on Bible Doctrines, the Trinity Doctrine is explained one year after it, was voted as an official doctrine which was in 1980. It states, while no single scriptural passage states formally the doctrine of the Trinity, it is assumed as a fact by Bible writers and mentioned several times. Only by faith can we accept the existence of the Trinity. P4. The concept of the Trinity, namely the idea that the three are one, is not explicitly stated but only assumed. Fernando. Annale Handbook of Seventh day Adventist Theology, Seventh day Adventist Encyclopedia, Volume. 12p 138 Doctrine of God. 1982 The SDA Church signs the Baptism, Eucharist and Ministry BEM. Document. From Spiritism in the Seventh day Adventist Church. pp. 8688 by Colin and Russell Standish Hart and Pub. 1995 and Capitulation to the Ecumenical Movement by Colin Standish. Foot is being made to de-emphasize the great pillars of the Christian faith. We cannot forget the Congress that convened in Lima, Peru, in 1981, in which almost all of the Christian communions of the world met, including a representative from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The representation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church surely hit an all-time low in January of 1982 when the theological representative of the Seventh-day Adventist Church signed what today has become known as the BEM document, sometimes also referred to as the Lima text, with which readers will probably be unfamiliar. BEM stands for Baptism, Eucharist, and Ministry. This document of the World Council of Churches is the centerpiece of their determination to bring in a one-world religion around the planet. 
1983 After 26 years, Walter Martin writes to the General Conference, Do you still hold to what we officially agreed upon in Questions on Doctrine in 1957? W. Richard Lesher, VP of General Conference, officially responds, The answer is yes. The original event back in 1957 is where we shook hands with the evangelicals and let them teach us what we should believe. On February 22, 1983, in a public meeting hall in Napa, California, Martin spoke to a packed house filled with Adventists, primarily from nearby Pacific Union College, which by that time was solidly in support of Desmond Fall and his errors. Martin announced that if the General Conference did not reprint questions on doctrine, he would write a book against our denomination and reduce us to the status of a cult. 1984 Baptismal Vow, the formatted again pro-Trinity language. If you compare this version with previous versions from years ago, you wouldn't recognize that this is the same denomination. Hungarian Estos are disfellowshipped by General Conf. President Neil Wilson for protesting the ecumenical involvement of the SDA Church in Hungary. 1985, the new church hymnal takes the place of the older attempted revised hymnal from the 1940s. It was decided that there was even more songs that could be replaced or changed to fit the new 1980s fundamental beliefs. Catholic terms are used in headings and responsive readings. Lots of new ecumenical hymns have been added embracing what we would have considered in the past, apostate terms, and wording. Besides praising our Holy Spirit, we embrace transubstantiation and the Eucharist, along with thirteen new Trinity hymns. William Johnson, senior editor of the Adventist Review, and Walter Martin take part in a five-part John Enkerberg television interview. Johnson fumbles throughout the process from Martin's firing squad style of questioning as the foundation of our faith is demolished. Johnson maintained that our faith was entirely based on the $1,980 statement of belief, not the Bible and not the spirit of prophecy, but only that 27-point statement. On all other points he collapsed, but he stood firm in his position that our church was founded on those 27 paragraphs and nothing else. But this makes us a creedal church instead of one founded on the Word of God. 1,985 Death of Roy Ellen Anderson one of the key men in apostasy. It was Elder Anderson who made it plain that the real purpose of questions on doctrine was a planned attempt to reshape the beliefs of our church. This was revealed in a letter to Pastor Robert Grieve, president of the North New Zealand Conference in the 1950s who left the faith. In Russell Standish, The Theology of Questions on Doctrine, P40. 1986, the official doctrine of the church is stated in the church manual, there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons. C.A. Church Manual Chapter 2 P23 refer also to the book Seventh-day Adventists Believe 27 Fundamental Beliefs, the Trinity. Previously, the Seventh-day Adventist Church signed, one for the BEM movement, a uniform baptism, Eucharist, and ministry movement. What was the Seventh-day Adventist response to the BEM document? Concerning the Eucharist are these astounding words. Recent research clearly reveals that there is no consensus among scholars on some of the most critical issues pertaining to the Eucharist. This central celebration of the Christian Church. The purpose of this essay is primarily to show how Seventh-day Adventist understanding of the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper, and to highlight Adventist understanding and practice of the Eucharist. On occasion, Seventh-day Adventists refer to the Eucharist as a sacrament. Being conscious of the sacredness of the celebration of the Eucharist, Adventists engage in a personal preparation that includes self-examination. In preparation for the celebration of the Eucharist, Seventh-day Adventists practice the washing of feet. Written response of the Seventh-day Adventist Church Council on Interchurch Relations, November 1985, published in Churches Respond to Bem Baptism, Eucharist, and Ministry, Volume 2 P341-343, published by the World Council of Churches in 1986, 1988 Seventh-day Adventist Believe. Seven Fundamental Belief book is published strongly Trinitarian drafted by essentially one man, P. G. Damstead, in connection with 194 persons from ten world divisions. His Doctor of Theology degree came from the Free Reformed University of Amsterdam. It was then paraded and promoted by J. R. Spangler, 
editor of Ministry magazine. The Royce Room previously had the same position. This is just one of many books of a new order prophesied by Ellen White in 1903. Among many issues, we will highlight just one in particular. In statement hash 16 concerning the Lord's Supper, it says, Among Protestants, the most common name for the communion service is the Lord's Supper 1 Cor. 1120. The names of the table of the Lord 1 Cor. 1021 RSV, the breaking of bread CF. Acts 27 242, and the Eucharist of reference to the thanksgiving and blessing aspect of the service mat. Cor. 10, 16, 11, 24. The Lord's Supper is to be a joyful season, not a time for sorrow. But mocks those who are qualified to participate in the communion service, then is the condition of the heart a full commitment to Christ and faith in his sacrifice. Of membership in any particular church. Consequently, believing Christians of all churches can take part in the Lord's Supper. P. 198-203. Here two terms are set side by side, as if they were the same the Lord's Supper and the Eucharist. One is true, the other false. The Eucharist is a blasphemy against God, and is as much different from the Lord's Supper as black is different from white. But the authors of this book alerted the reader that every time the term, the Lord's Supper, is used, it could also mean the Eucharist, and probably does. It's an ecumenical ploy. Two terms are laid side by side, as if they are equal, and when that is allowed, the error always will win out. 1989, March 15, just prior to giving another lecture of attack on Adventism, Walter Martin dies from a sudden heart attack. 1990, at the General Conference session in Indianapolis, a Catholic priest spoke and prayed from the pulpit. The conference communications director told a local newspaper that we no longer believe what we did a hundred years ago concerning comments in the great controversy about the papacy. Condensed version of the great controversy was handed out in Indianapolis. Shirley Burton, a spokesperson for the denomination, told the Indianapolis Star Daily newspaper the tract was trash. The main body of the church has moved away from an anti-Catholic position. The new position of cooperation with the Catholic Church was exemplified by the invitation from the Seventh-day Adventists of the Vatican to send an official observer to the conference. Arkansas Catholic 72990. The following or further comments found in the Indianapolis Star, July 14, 1990, though Adventist officials conceded the history of the denomination as an anti-Catholic bent. They said the modern church is trying to move from that stance, though the dissidents want us to be like we were 100 years ago, said Herbert Ford, news director for the 6.2 million member church. But the church has to move not away from the eternal principles of God, but things do have to change. These people are a thorn in the flesh, but the church tolerates them. United States in Prophecy Great Controversy, which was sponsored by the Entis Lay Workers Affiliate of Tennessee, calls Catholicism a pagan religion and refers to the Pope as a beast. Adventists who want to cling to the Church's historic anti-Catholic beliefs represent only about 1,000 in the North American division of 750,000 members, Ford said. Voted in at the 1,990 General Conference, session July 11, 2 p.m., was a modified baptismal vow. On page 44 of the 1986 Church Manual, it states, Do you believe in God the Father, in His Son Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit? How all proof is this new Trinitarian vow in place of it found in the 1990 Church Manual, also on page 44, Do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? 1991 May 2 and the issue of the Adventist Review, Roy Adams, editor declares the WCC's accentuation of the Holy Spirit and the Eucharist fits into the ambit of the three angels' messages. WCC equals World Council of Churches. 1993 George Knight, a professor and prominent SDA theologian, makes this startling confession in Ministry Magazine. October 1993, most of the founders of Seventh-day Adventism would not be able to join the church today if they had to subscribe to the denomination's fundamental beliefs. Or specifically, most would not be able to agree to belief number two which deals with the doctrine of the Trinity. In all actuality, this would have included all of the founders and pioneers of the earliest year church, and it should be alarming to today's members. 
1994 William Johnson, editor of the Adventist Review, writes, Adventist beliefs have changed over the years under the impact of present truth. Most startling is the teaching regarding Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Adventist Review, January 6, 1994, while the pre-existence of Christ is held, the divine begotten sonship of Christ is held by the official world church up to the 1940s, is denied as a false doctrine, as John Esson puts it. The world wide web internet becomes a well known vehicle for reaching the world. Eating the general conference to the punch, Walter Chick McGillie moves his message to the world on the internet for his seriation is the ACSDA church. By 1996, he is establishing internet domain names under the name Seventh day Adventist, as he is quicker to understand the effectiveness of this. McGill holds to the beliefs and foundation of the original SDA church from the days of the pioneers and Ellen White. 1995-56th General Conference World Session in Utrecht, Netherlands. The Vatican flag is carried through the meeting hall in a singular fashion amidst an unusually loud ovation. The Pope and I descended from the same father that makes us brothers who should not go around making personal attacks on each other. Differences, no matter how legitimate, would not justify the alienation of a member of the family. After all, the Pope and I are brothers. Columbia Union Visitor, June 1, 1995, quoting Mitchell Tyner, the Associate General Counsel for the General Conference. The ordination of women into the Church as ministers is again a key issue, and the vote against the ordination of women to ministry is an overwhelming 1,481 to 673, from 205 countries attended, with a prox. 18,000 plus people present in total. 20 observers representing other faiths also attend. 1,996 devotional ye shall receive powers printed, in which the prophet's words are changed. Back in 1,899, Ellen White wrote, Why should we not prostrate ourselves at the throne of divine grace, praying that God's Spirit may be poured out upon us as it was upon the disciples? Its presence will soften our hard hearts and fill us with joy, and rejoicing transforming us into channels of blessing. The Lord would have every one of his children rich in faith, and this faith is the fruit of the working of the Holy Spirit upon the mind. It dwells with each soul who will receive it speaking to the impenitent in words of warning, and pointing them to Jesus, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. It causes light to shine into the minds of those who are seeking to cooperate with God, giving them efficiency and wisdom to do his work. Signs of the Times, September 27, 1899 if you look carefully, you will see that Ellen White has used the word it four times, and one it's when speaking of the Holy Spirit. But in the devotional ye shall receive power, p. 59, it has been changed to he or his and him. See also ye shall receive power, p. 93, 151, 164, 183, 303, 318, 319, 321, 323, 325. 344 for other changes. A careful comparison of this to the EGWA Writings website reveals this. 1996 Merlin Burt writes, During the 1930s there continued to be statements teaching the old view. This largely changed during the 1940s. The fourth quarter of 1936 Sabbath school lesson quarterly was prepared by T.M. French. French concluded regarding Christ's pre-existence with these words, he was therefore no part of creation, but was begotten of the Father in the days of eternity, and was very God himself. It seems that French was mixing Wilcox's fundamental beliefs reference to Christ as very God with the old view of a begotten Christ. Merlin D. But the demise of Semi-Arianism and Anti-Trinitarianism in Adventist Theology, 1888-1957 p. 40. So the belief in a begotten Christ has become the old view, while an unbegotten Christ is now the new officially accepted doctrine. 1996 Porter's the Air Hospital merges with Catholic Hospital in Denver, Colorado. Now part of Catholic Health Initiatives, a joint venture between Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati and Sisters of St. Francis to form Century Health. 1997 SDA logo is changed from the three angels to flames and cross, becoming Catholic friendly. 1998 Andrews University published Women in Ministry, Biblical, 
and historical perspectives prepared by an ad hoc committee on hermeneutics and ordination from the North American division, with the express purpose of proving that it is biblical to ordain women to ministry. Very researched and biased in its appraisal of the issue, this work is exposed by several scholars as flawed and unbiblical. 1999 B.T. Rice, pastor of the saint. Louis USDA Northside Church addresses the Pope in a Vatican Mass, held locally as Pope, Your Holiness, your historic visit to St. Louis. This was at the Vesper service held at the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis. At the same time, a small ministry with volunteers handed out 100,000 booklets, Is Mary Dead or Alive? In a follow-up message from the General Conference to the Pope of Rome, they stated, begging pardon for their bigotry. The bigotry should have been the job mission and message that the general conference should have been behind delivering instead of sending a stooge pastor in submission for ecumenical purposes. 2000 Ecumenical Gathering, the meeting of U.S. church leaders and annual gathering of heads of Christian churches from around the nation has elected Seventh-day Adventist Dr. Burt B. Each as the vice chair of the group steering committee. More than 30 church leaders participated in the February 23-25 meetings, including leaders from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the Presbyterian Church in USA, the United Church of Christ, and the American Baptist Churches in the USA. 2001 September. Adventist World Church created the International Board of Ministerial and Theological Education event in September 2001 designed to provide overall guidance and standards to the professional training of pastors, evangelists, theologians, teachers, chaplains, and other denominational employees involved in ministerial and religious formation or spiritual formation in each of the church's 13 regions around the world. Adventist News Network Feature Article Church Congregations Increase Focus on Spiritual Formation, February 3, 2004 in the next few years, contemplative prayer and spiritual formation enter into our universities in their teachings and are made prerequisites for theology degree programs. 2002 Vatican Rome The Pope invites close friends to Assisi. The General Conference is on the short list to meet the pontiff. As a result, the conference clasps hands with the papacy. When Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when... Under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government, and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvellous working of Satan, and that the end is near. Ellen White 5 TP 451 1885 2003 Journal Raz G.C., Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty since 1995, is elected as Secretary General of the Annual Conference of Secretaries of the Christian World Communions, succeeding Bert B. Each. Raz would hold this position until 2014. Questions on Balkan is republished and circulated by Andrews University Pro Trinitarian, Pro and Fallen, Human Nature of Christ. 2005 The Global Christian Forum meets in Lusaka, Zambia. About 70 church leaders from all parts of Africa gather together, including Baptist, Anglican, Pentecostal, Roman Catholic, Orthodox, Seventh-day Adventists, Lutheran churches, the All-Africa Christian Council. Baptismal vow is revised to the Trinity Creed to read, Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the Statement of Fundamental Beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge to live your life by God's grace in harmony with these teachings? For the first time in Adventist history, the Church has based its membership on a creed. The Prophet had told us 120 years earlier, the Bible, and the Bible alone, is to be our creed. R. H. Deck 15, 1885, 2008 Greater New York Conference loses millions in the stock market. Living Springs Adult Community is sold off. Property next to Camp Berkshire is liquidated off. Pastors are downsized in numbers and forced to cover more churches. Prior to this, the conference sold its van ministry and sent her along with the local satellite television channel. This includes video cameras and studio equipment. 2008 in contrast to the 1,936 Sabbath school lesson, the two indeed caught a lesson in 2008 teachers that the Father, Son and Holy Spirit 
are not really a father or a son or a holy spirit but are three divine beings who are just role playing these parts. Here is a quote from the lesson, but imagine a situation in which the being we have come to know as God the Father came to die for us. And the one we have come to know as Jesus stayed back in heaven we are speaking in human terms to make a point. Nothing would have changed except that we would have been calling each by the name we now use for the other. That is what equality in the deity means. April 10, 2008, P19. As J. N. Andrew said, this Trinity doctrine destroys the personality of God and his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. R.H. March 6, 1855. April 70th. Andrew's University Doctor. Orton Dean of the Theological Seminary hosts a special eight hour plus event or two Jesuits trained at the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, among other achievements. These men, Stephen Bevans and Roger Schroeder come directly from the Catholic Theological Union, a graduate school of theology and ministry. Letters from concerned individuals from within the local Michigan conference, though unanswered. 2009 Andrews University staff and students worship at a mosque in Russia, East Africa. They take the usual position of bowing on the floor while repeating a worship chant to Allah. 2010 a survey by the General Conference of Estos of the Church's 13 divisions finds that the majority do not want to change the Church's policy on ordaining women to pastoral ministry. Meanwhile, women begin turning up as head elders and pastors of churches in the South Pacific Division and the North American Division. 2010 the 59th General Conference session of Seventh-day Adventist elects Ted N. C. Wilson as General Conference President. The Church in session reaffirms its belief in the literal creation week and reaffirms its belief in marriage as a institution, ruling out the option of homosexual marriage for Adventists. A request is put forward for a committee to study the theology of ordination. 2011 Adventist Midwest Health utilizes worldly and secular pink glove videos for promotion and advertisement along with worldly music and dance featured in their messaging. This cancer catches on elsewhere in other health institutions. 2012 General Conference publishes The Great Hope, a greatly stripped-down version of what is supposed to be the great controversy to be shared by the one hundreds of thousands. It is void of vital historical prophetic information that needs to be shared with the world. Information about how the papacy plays into future and past time events and the identity of the Antichrist along with her apostate daughters. It is a mere shell of its original book, missing dozens of chapters and gets a nickname, The Great Hoax as a result. The hoax was on the members for funding this project, not realizing the waste of effort and money. The White Estate database is hacked by an anonymous SDA group in Europe. Their concern is for public access to all of Ellen White's documents, and that they have been restricted, and it is public domain at this point, as they should belong to the people. The meaning and context of her writings is hampered by not being able to view everything in its entirety. This anonymous group is pushing for full digitized access to anyone wanting them, not just a handful of privileged people. The White Estate attempts to sue for damages. The anonymous group threatens to release all of Sister White's writings. Their request is that the White Estate does it to save their reputation. 2012 August 12 TH, Lendale Adventist Hospital, California allows pastors and deacons from St. Church to come and visit and host a Feast of Assumption celebration of Mary going to heaven, also called the Blessing of the Grapes. This goes fully against our state of the dead message and belief. This is like Israel allowing bar worship within its borders. Annie Nakers and her husband Stephen I produce a film called Seventh-day Adventist in response to the state of California passing Prop 8, banning same-sex marriage. The film is focused on stories of gay and lesbian Adventists in an effort to change hearts and minds in the pews through the storyline. August 2012. Andrews University Press published Homosexuality, Marriage and the Church, Biblical Counseling, and Religious Liberty Issues. A 600-page collection of 14 major essays on a range of topics relating to the changes happening around the issue of homosexuality and marriage in Adventism. November 2012. GC leaders voted to put into action a request from the 2010 GC for a committee to study the theology of ordination. The committee will submit a report to the October 2014 Annual Council. Author Steele from the Briar will head the committee, which will address defining ordination 
and the implications of women's ordination. 2013 revision is made on the fundamental belief in the gift of prophecy. Ellen White's authority is diminished. The phrases as the Lord's messenger and a continuing authoritative source of truth are removed. Arthur Steele would later say the suggested changes seek to avoid giving the impression that Ellen G. White and the Bible are equivalent sources of truth. 2014 Ganon Diop GC Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty since 2011 is elected as the new Secretary General at the annual Conference of Secretaries of the Christian World Communions. Voice of Prophecy produces a national Christmas special, October 15 TH of the Spencerville Adventist Church in Silver Spring, MD. The broadcast goes nationwide Christmas Eve on the ABC network with a message from Sean Brunster. Christmas trees in all their glory are lit up on stage just like the evangelicals do it pretending to honor Christ, when in fact they give glory and honor in all reality to paganism. An abomination of desolation is on full display on national television to be one with the world. 2014 Crane Chicago Business, Chicago Eel, June 28th Adventist Health Midwest Partners with Alexian Brothers Health System, Roman Catholic owned. 2015 Huntsville First Seventh-day Adventist Church in Huntsville, Alabama begins to offer Sunday morning service on February 8th. This church is less than two miles from the campus of Oakwood University. This is in addition to Sabbath service as an attempt to bring in unchurched community members. Spectrum Magazine, February 6, 2015. The General Conference Session in San Antonio TX turns down a motion that would allow each division of the SDA Church to decide for itself whether to ordain women to the ministry. None of the church's 13 walled divisions ordain female pastors. However, Three unions began to ordain women prior to the vote, and two other unions decided to stop ordaining male pastors in what they called a show of solidarity with women after the vote. Under church policy, only men can be ordained as pastors, while women can serve as commissioned ministers. A person does not need to be ordained to lead a congregation. Then White Symposium is held at Andrews University and spread worldwide denies the spirit of prophecy's inspired authority to define doctrinal faith and practice, but only its theological and practical guidance and end-time application. The White Estate reaches a settlement with the hacker from 2012 and releases the rest of Sister White's writings that they have been holding back for years. The collection contains approximately 8,300 typed documents, letters and manuscripts dating from 1,845 to 1,915, which includes unpublished writings. The White Estate makes an announcement that they are releasing these additional writings to commemorate the 100th year since Ellen White passed away. Less truth-seeking Adventists now fully know that Sister White wrote over and over that Jesus is their comforter coming to them, in spirit form, as the Holy Spirit, not some other mystery person or ghost. The dogma of the denomination's teaching has been shown to be an error for those who want to know and are paying attention. 2015 is the Church President Ted Wilson holds first meeting with United Nations Chief Secretary Ban Ki-moon on April 6 in New York City. Follow-up meetings take place in Silver Spring, MD SDA Church headquarters. Wilson pledges church cooperation with the Millennium Balls of the Un. The United Nations is a cohort with the New World Order. There is no reason why we should entertain or meet with them thinking we can aid or steer their direction to a different course. Angel Manuel Rodriguez authored an article titled The Question of Sonship from the Biblical Research Institute in November SDA Theological Hierarchy Answering the Question. Does the Bible mean when it refers to Jesus as the Son of God? In his answer he downplays the literal speaking of the Bible, which would therefore be Antichrist. Is the Eternal Son of God? We are dealing with the metaphorical use of the word son. The metaphorical significance of this would then be that the son is not the natural, literal son of the father. 1 John 2, 22, 23, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, that denieth the father and the son. V 23, whosoever denieth the son, the same hath not the father. But he that acknowledgeth the son hath the father also. Hollywood, California, USA Hollywood is a church, ordained a church elder, a male transgender person, as he dresses head to toe as a woman, now known as Rhonda. Deuteronomy 22, 5, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, 
for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord their God. Pastor Michael Lino and the Palm Springs California SDA Church plays host to Palm Springs Gay Men's Choir to sing in their church for Sabbath worship service on December 19th. 36 men in total. Pictured in the background, on stage is a fully decorated and lighted Christmas tree. The abomination grows. Adventist Health System is found guilty in a lawsuit filed by three former employees in 2012. It was a crime that paid doctors excessive compensation to lock in their patient referrals to Adventist-owned hospitals. The settlement is for one hundred eighteen million, of which one hundred fifteen dollars million will go to the government, the remaining to North Carolina, Texas, Florida, and Tennessee. 2016 October 12 Canon Diop Director of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, World Church attends the Conference of Secretaries of Christian World Communions that was held in Rome. Today, at the Vatican, everyone in attendance greets the Pope in total submission. In a sign of unity, Ganon claps hands with the papacy. Protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the gulf to a spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. And under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow, in the steps of Rome, in trampling on the rights of conscience. Ellen White, Great Controversy, P. 588. A lesbian married to a SDA woman is baptized in Chico, California SDA Church. The SDA General Conference is a 501c3 corporation, and because of this signed agreement with the U.S. government, the organized SDA Church cannot and is forbidden to discriminate against LGBT. By doing so, they would lose their tax status and forfeit such benefits, making necessary the repayment of taxes to the U.S. government for decades past. There can't be any resistance to such acts of sins. 2016 War on the Bible Drinking from the Same Wine Cup as Babylon Covered by Adventist Today, No Melinda Town Hall Meeting December 3, R.D. supporting gay film director Nanny Akers says the Bible cannot be taken literally, especially Leviticus 18. 628. Jesus had two fathers, we affirm, the LGBT lifestyle. Professor David Larson said, the six texts that are usually used to clubber to condemn people who practice the LGBT lifestyle should be removed from the Bible. Then let us just love everyone. Pastor Derek A. Morris is named president of the Hope Channel, Inc. His credentials include a demon in preaching from an outside theological seminary, Gordon Conwell, as well as bringing in spiritual formation and contemplative prayer into our denomination in the early 2000s. He most recently was pastor at Forest Lake SDA Church in Florida. 2017, March 11, Green Lake SDA Church in Seattle. While Pastor John McClarty says sometimes the law needs to be bent to accommodate reality. This is in response to supporting those in the LGBT community. McCarthy gives his stage over to Stephen Iyer to promote the film Seventh-day Adventists on Friday night, ushering in the Sabbath and again on Sabbath afternoon the next day. Iyer and Hi's wife, Danny Nakers, launched this movie project back in 2012. February 28, Central Jamaica Conference CJC of Seventh-day Adventist employs its first female pastor, Latoya Smythe Forbes. This is the first of its 66-year history of operation. 2017 April 3 RD, Adventist Today, Walla Walla General Hospital 110-year existence in Washington State is sold to Providence Health and Services Saint. Medical Center Catholic owned for $14 million payable over 24 years. However, because of tax implications of its non-profit status, it is referred to as a transfer of control or sponsorship, and not an official sale. Adventist hospitals have been performing abortions for years and are finally called out for it through social media. Glendale, California SDA Church members dress up to celebrate Gay Pride Month in June. June 24, La Sierra University Church and the Southeastern California Conference of Seventh-day Adventists confirm Beverly Maravilla to gospel ministry with ordination. SDA members everywhere are being disfellowshipped for standing for the original pillars and foundation of the Adventist faith in the last few years from Carl Y. Gar, FLNY, R. and many other states in the USA. Walla Walla General Hospital is sold to the Catholic owned Providence Health and Services Providence Saint Medical Center for $14 a million, payable in installments over 24 years. 2018 January 9, Walla Walla University hosts Gregory Boyle, a Jesuit priest, to lead out in worship. 
The program is called Community, an attendance requirement for anyone pursuing a bachelor's degree. The leaders ignore the counsel given by inspiration of the spirit of prophecy and the Almighty God. Why is the protest completely silent? January 22, Fourth Annual Symposium on the Role of Religion and Faith-Based Organizations in International Affairs was held at the United Nations and sponsored by the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. In attendance was Dr. Ganon Diop. 2018 Liberal Pastors in Major Church Locale start parading an all-inclusive message to unify all walks of life as we are the Church. This is very similar to a coexist belief that is what agents of Satan preach. October 8 Daytona International Speedway and Florida Hospitals DA renamed Advent Health announced an expansion of their relationship making the health system an official presenting sponsor of Daytona Speed Weeks at the Wall Center of Racing. 2019 February two major business meetings take place in churches in Collegeville Park and Madison, Indiana, deciding the fate of members and their standing within the church. Pastors from both locations make false claims that those in question believe the Holy Spirit is Satan. Another false claim made is that they do not believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ. This last claim is the same thing that Adventist pioneers had to defend in their publications from other Christian denominations. Review and Herald, November 10, 1863, Volume 22, page 189. As before remarked, the great mistake of Trinitarians in arguing this subject is this, they make no distinction between a denial of a trinity and a denial of the divinity of Christ. They see only the two extremes between which the truth lies, and take every expression referring to the pre-existence of Christ as evidence of a trinity. The scriptures abundantly teach the pre-existence of Christ and his divinity, but they are entirely silent in regard to a trinity. The declaration that the divine Son of God could not die is as far from the teachings of the Bible as darkness is from light. And we would ask the Trinitarian, to which of the two natures are we indebted for redemption? The answer must, of course, be to that one which died or shed his blood for us. Or we have redemption through his blood. Then it is evident that if only the human nature died, our Redeemer is only human, and that the Divine Son of God took no part in the work of redemption, for he could neither suffer nor die. Early we say right that the doctrine of a trinity degrades the atonement by bringing the sacrifice, the blood of our purchase, down to the standard of Sosinianism. Joseph Harvey Wagner, Seventh-day Adventist pioneer. Members in the USA are disfellowshipped for believing what the Bible teaches, that there is truly a father and son. This same action spreads to Africa, where church members who have awakened from human creeds also have disciplinary action taken against them in Uganda, Kenya, and Zambia. Come out of her, my people. 2019 March 89 Walla Walla University hosts a weekend seminar on ancient vs. modern Adventism, presented by the Center for Bible Faith and Mission speakers Dr. Alton Thompson and Dr. David Thomas. Since when is the foundational time? in our denomination's history called ancient. March 13 Lent Wednesday arrives in the SDA denomination. Jacksonville, Florida, USA, first SDA church, master's degree recipient from Andrews University. Pastor Jonathan Paynato openly endorses the Catholic practice of Lent Aka Ash Wednesday and the local church's YouTube channel. He calls it the Christian practice. This is H. G. a priest place on your fort yard, a cross made from ashes. Master R. or Priest Peinado offers to condone the practice of Lent from an Adventist perspective by having you listen to his podcast. He then goes on to Mention, We will see you on Palm Sunday, Y. Go O D Friday, O N Holy Sabbath H and D Resurrection Sunday. The Jesuits are, and have been inside now for a while. April 26, Vancouver, Canada, O Preachers DA Church, Jesus is portrayed by a woman in an Easter program. If this isn't sacrilegious enough, now throw in a gay flamboyant Mary Magdalene portrayed by a man, and a female Apostle Peter for a real blasphemous effect. The twelve disciples are five men and seven women, all of this under the direction of a female senior pastor, Rhoda Klein Miller. 2019 June 28-29 Downers Grove, Illinois SDA Conference forces Downers Grove Church to cancel a two-day seminar featuring Pastor Stephen Bower from Secrets Unsealed. The Illinois Conference resents Pastor Boer's position on male leadership in the church and bows to women's ordination and the agenda that drives it. July 25 General Conference publishes New King James Version Hope Bible. 
and the cover is the Tricrita logo featuring three sixes intertwined, 666. The Tricrita logo is also used within the Witchcraft Ward, and is the symbol used for the Trinity Doctrine. This 2023 Ring of Peace Interfaith Ceremony is held in Linda, Germany, where SDA representatives gathered along with pantheists, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Catholics, evangelicals, among other religions. This was the Religions for Peace 10th World Assembly to foster multi-religious cooperation. Featuring on location is a 25-foot wooden ring-shaped statue art and day idol to represent the Wheel of Buddha, the Ring of the Prophet Muhammad Solomon, and Lessing's Ring Parable Story. Pointing different faiths as one. 2020 Santiago, Chile Nicholas Miller, Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Department, Rep for Lake Union Conference of SDA, and a professor at Andrews University stands in front of a slide presentation with the statement, We are not anti-gay, while at a religious freedom forum. This attendance is representing from the North American Division and General Conference, their stance called Fairness for All Art. Church leaders have taken a middle ground even, Though God himself is opposed to such moral issues as homosexuality. May 14, Lima, Peru. Amazon Spiritists, Hindus, Muslims, Roman Catholics, Evangelicals, Mormons, Jews, and Seventh-day Adventists answer the call by the Pope to unite at the Plaza Mayor. In the political and religious heart of Peru, Edgardo Mugaza, Director of Religious Liberty and Education for the North Peru Mission of Estars was present and representing. The Pope was using the COVID-19 pandemic as a reason for uniting really old divisions between Protestants, Catholics, Jews, Muslims, and pagans. There was a call to respect Mother Earth and the ecosystems of our planet. 2020 made the North American division of Estars praised the virtues of Ramadan and told its constituents that they could fast in solidarity with Muslims during the 2020 Islamic festival. This is what happens when your ideology has centered in full support of ecumenism. Meanwhile, Islamic terrorists were celebrating Ramadan by mass murdering Christians and Muslims, 584 killed, 587 injured in the first three weeks of the four-week time period. This took place in many countries, Afghanistan, Iraq, Nigeria, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, Congo, France, Israel, Egypt, Philippines, Bangladesh, Thailand, India, Mali, and Pakistan. June Portage's DA Church in Portage, Wisconsin posts on their outdoor sign, Black Lives Matter. Many leaders and churches are rallying behind this movement in the loss of life of George Floyd. However, there is a political movement behind this group, BLM, and it strongly opposes the Creator, who made heaven and earth, and denies his word. They are standing united under the banner of the gay pride flag and other secular missions and purposes of the group, BLM, including feminism and ecumenism. This is truly an anti-religious revolution that is underway. The events of error and apostasy will never stop. Today it is claimed that the banner of Seventh-day Adventism is the remnant church, but in reality there are two Seventh-day Adventist churches. One the original that formed the foundation of our faith that was led by the Spirit of God, that is the remnant church. Two the counterfeit new organization that was brought in that is actually the General Conference Corporation of Seventh-day Adventists, organized in 1904. Religion would be changed, Ellen White said. Refer to Letter 242 from 1903. How do you change religion? You change goddess. They say the ship will go through, stay on the ship. But what they don't realize is what constitutes God's church. God has a church. It is not the great cathedral. Neither is it the national establishment. Neither is it the various denominations. It is the people who love God and keep his commandments. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Where Christ is even among the humble few, this is Christ's church, for the presence of the high, and holy one who inhabiteth eternity can alone constitute a church. Where two or three are present who love and obey the commandments of God, Jesus there presides, let it be the desolate place of the earth, in the wilderness, in the city or enclosed in prison walls. Ellen White Manuscript Releases Volume 17 P82 Upper P315.5 so A false support system is preached to keep the people within the walls of the General Conference Corporation of Seventh-day Adventists. Teachers read the Bible in the light of their own understanding and traditions, and the people do not search the scriptures for themselves, 
and judge for themselves as to what is truth, that they yield up their judgment and commit their souls to their leaders. And in wide desire of ages P459, or that God has honest children among the nominal Adventists and the foreign churches, and before the plague shall be poured out. Ministers and people will be called out from these churches and will gladly receive the truth. Satan knows this. And before the loud cry of the third angel is given, he raises an excitement in these religious bodies that those who have rejected the truth may think that God is with them. He hopes to deceive the honest and lead them to think that God is still working for the churches. But the light will shine, and all who are honest will leave the fallen churches and take their stand with the remnant. Ellen White, Early Writings, p. 261.1. Revelation 18.4. And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. What is completely missed in this text from Revelation is who is God's people. He calls them out of the established forms of religion following after the wine of Babylon. There is no clause in this statement like, except for Seventh-day Adventists, God called us out of Babylon. If we had stayed there, bound down by ministers and creeds, the glorious light of the Holy Sabbath never would have reached us, but glory to God. The second angel's message called us out from the fallen churches where we are now free to think and act for ourselves in the fear of God. James White, the third angel's message, p. 11.3, 1850. The early Advent believers were led out of a false system of worship, but sadly we have fallen asleep and allowed the same condition to happen. Today we have allowed ourselves to come full circle. We have adopted the errors and wine of the same condition of the fallen churches. Therefore we cannot honestly claim in whole the three angels' message. We now call old error new light as we chase after the same God as the rest of Protestantism. Are on the very verge of the time of trouble and perplexities that are scarcely dreamed of are before us. A power from beneath is leading men to war against heaven. Human beings have confederated with satanic agencies to make void the law of God. The inhabitants of the world are fast, becoming as the inhabitants of the world in Noah's day, who were swept away by the flood, and as the inhabitants of Sodom, who were consumed by fire from heaven. The powers of Satan are at work to keep minds diverted from eternal realities. The enemy has arranged matters to suit his own purposes. Only business sports, the fashions of the day these things occupy the minds of men and women. Amusements and unprofitable readings spoil the judgment. In the broad road that leads to eternal ruin there walks a long procession. The world, filled with violence, reveling, and drunkenness, is converting the church. The law of God, the divine standard of righteousness, is declared to be of no effect. Ellen White Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9p 43.2 I have been repeatedly shown that our oppressors should now be constantly employed in publishing light and truth. This is a time of spiritual darkness in the churches of the world. Ignorance of divine things has hidden God and the truth from view. The forces of evil are gathering in strength. Satan flatters his co-workers that he will do a work that will captivate the world. While partial inactivity has come upon the church, Satan and his hosts are intensely active. The professed Christian churches are not converting the world, for they are themselves corrupted with selfishness and pride and need to feel the converting power of God in their midst before they can lead others to a purer or higher standard. Then write Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9p, 65.2.